Desert and the great American Southwest. I bid you good evening, good morning, as the case may dictate, from time zone to time zone, stretching in the west from the Tahitian and Hawaiian Island chains, eastward, over flyover country, many of us to the Caribbean, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, south into South America, north to the pole and worldwide on the Internet. This is Coast to Coast AM. Good morning, I'm Mark Bell, and I want to serve you notice at the beginning of the program that what we are going to discuss is, without a doubt, going to disturb some people. And so, as you hear what the content of this evening's show is going to be, if you are one of those people, go turn your radio off. Do you believe in magic? Do you? Magic? Things you cannot understand and put your hand on, or as we say in Dreamland, things that do not fit so easily into a box. Things that may well be true, but you can't quite prove. Do you believe in witchcraft? Do you believe in revenge? Do you believe in protection? Yes, these are the areas we're going to enter this morning. It is a, it is a door that you may not wish to open for yourself. And if you don't, then I'm serving you notice right now. Turn, turn the radio to a different station. Go listen to a little country music. Soothe your soul. Whatever. <laughs> My guest is going to be Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Uh, Dr. Paglini, uh, for lack of a better term, is a witch. And um, in all the months and maybe even years of searching that I have uh, engaged in with regard to this sort of topic, I have never, until Evelyn Paglini, Dr. Uh, Evelyn Paglini, have I run into somebody that I consider to be the real McCoy. It occurred uh, toward the end of one of my shows, in which I typically would um, reach out and try to find somebody uh, who is a, I think my words were broom riding, cauldron stirring witch. You know, the real thing. Uh, and I would joke and say the kind of uh, witch that you would find squished under Dorothy's house, perhaps. Well, obviously those are stereotypes that, uh, that, that don't necessarily um, uh, necessarily fit uh, Dr. Evelyn Paglini. But uh, I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that um, you're about to hear the real McCoy. And so those of you who are reborn, those of you who are uh, devout, devout Christians and uh, feel that your sensitive ears would be offended by what's coming, uh, you should uh, extinguish your radio or change the channel. And that's really an honest and fair warning I'm giving you. I understand there will be some people disturbed by this. We received, and I say we, my wife and I received, um, a very unusual box uh, earlier today, today. Um, and along with it uh, in this box with many, many things that we will talk of, uh, a letter which said, Dear Mr. Bell, I have sent you an arsenal to help you achieve your goals and protect you and those you love. Please give me a call at your convenience. There are so many wonderful tools to assist you and with meditation, visualization, candle burning, imitative and sympathetic magic. All you need is the power of your mind. Essential oils have been blended and energized according to the formulas passed down to me. Hope your lovely wife enjoys some of the scents in the massage and bath oils. Also, the sacred silver sage smudge sticks are an excellent cleansing tool that black salt and sulfur can protect and purify. When you're ready, to learn a little about natural magic, please call me. Me is Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Or should I say that's who she is? Mr. Bell, if you took outer limits, one step beyond, and more, you might have an idea of my childhood and upbringing. A psychic, parapsychologist, doctor of divinity, founded, uh, founder of the International Psychic Center in 1972, a research and investigative organization, 
metaphysical teacher, lecturer, consultant, spiritual warrior, called upon as an authority on the occult and the supernatural by law enforcement agencies. Set precedent in the Texas Superior Court System on a child abuse case with ritual overtones. Worked with law enforcement on missing persons and murder cases. Born and raised in a family of century-old occultists and practitioners of natural magic. Trained in natural magic by my grandfather from the age of four. Here is Dr. Evelyn Maglini. Uh, doctor, welcome to the program. Thank you and welcome to you. <laughs> Your doctorate is in parapsychology, is that correct? That's one of them, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I probably, uh, according to the literature I have here, I, I mischaracterized you. You called in that night that I was calling for the cauldrons during uh, uh, Broom Riding Witch. You remember that? Yes, I do, sir. Um, so I, I would imagine that which would probably not be the appropriate, really the appropriate term, or is it? Well, I don't follow a Wiccan coven. Uh -huh. I don't belong to Gardnerian or Saxon or some of the other sects of Wicca, but I practice natural magic, and I am a Genesean, which is another pagan religion that is very much into natural magic. And so, therefore, we use similar tools as those that are practicing uh, forms of Wicca, other forms of Voodoo, or Santeria. Um, most pagan cultures out there have got, uh, let's say, the same basis of understanding once they get into magic. Uh, what, Evelyn, is natural magic? What do you mean by that? Well, natural magic is that God has given us many tools to use. Of course, the firm first and foremost is the power of our own mind. But also you have the psychology of color because color has a vibration. And if you are able to tap into the vibration of color, and we live in color. We are surrounded by color. We are influenced by color. Indeed. Indeed we are. Yes, it's all around us. And most people don't understand that there is a particular vibration that is attributed to each color of the spectrum. And so, therefore, like, say you wanted to empower yourself. Say you had a very rough day and you're very tired and you needed to go out that evening. And yet mm -hmm. you said, where am I going to find the energy? Sure. Well, if you put on something the color of red or if you manifest the color of red in your mind's eye or if you use a candle and you focus your attention on the vibration of the color of red, what you will do is you will revitalize, rejuvenate, and energize yourself. And so, therefore, that evening you can go out and have a wonderful time, feeling fine and refreshed, only because you tapped into that particular vibration. Believe it or not, red is the strongest vibration in the spectrum of color. Well, then how come when you drive a red car... Uh, You're you, spotted. <laughs> it's a fact. I, I, I have a red car. I like red cars. Uh, but they... You stand out like a sore thumb, inevitably you get the tickets. Right, because of the vibration. It's the one that is the most attracted to. Huh. It's the strongest vibration out there. And so if you want to be discreet, then you would wear the, use the color of white, mm -hmm. or you would use the color of a calming, like a blue or a green. That usually will go unnoticed. The blue, depending on the color, can be either healing which is your lighter tones of blue, or your dark blue, which is protection. So therefore, when you want to put a shield of protection around you, or when you want to increase your healing, always use the color of blue. So if, interesting. If you want to attract money, if you want to attract success, better business, growth, if you want to bring something to you of a prosperity, mm -hmm. then you use the color of green. Green. Oh, well, that makes sense. If you want to stimulate the intellect, if you want clear-sightedness and, and good imagination and inspiration, then you would tap into the color of yellow. Really? Yes. And if you want to bring a lot of peace and love and harmony within you, within your family, within your home and your environment, then by all means use the color of pink. Pink. Um... 
And the light, of course, is purity and balance and can also help put a shield of protection and bring in the white light. And, of course, there is black. But, well, before we get to black, uh, I want all the things that you described, for example, that uh, are brought on by the color pink. Mm -hmm. But I would resist its wearing. You don't have to wear it. <laughs> okay, you can put it in your environment as an accent. <laughs> And you can also do a meditation and a visualization using the color of pink as a candle and using maybe a little bit of attraction oil so that you can magnetize to you, to your environment, and to your family some peace, some love, and some harmony. Mm -hmm. um, Evelyn, uh, are, there, are, there na are there people who are natural uh, witches, in other words, uh, who have power, though they may not have used it uh, or may not have abused it, uh, but have more natural ability than others? Yes, there are. Everyone has latent psychic ability and intuition, but there are some people who have been born into a family, and it's hereditary, as mine is, there are others out there who just have, maybe from a past incarnation, the ability to have a sixth sense, second sight, uh -huh. sensitivity, insight, and an affinity toward natural magic. They know what tools to use. They know what herbs to use. They know what essential oils. Your wife, for instance, immediately went for the salt. Oh, yes. It's a natural instinct. Uh, well, I have some stories that I will tell you and others about my wife. She is a very, very, very interesting person. Um, but there are, I might, as well, I might as well, before we get into any of the heavier stuff, I, I would like to, uh, to hit you with what you're going to be hit with anyway, Evelyn. Sure. Uh, there are going to be those who, despite my early warning, uh, will continue to listen and will be calling in anyway, and they will uh, tell you, that what you are doing has nothing to do with God. What you are doing has everything to do with the devil and the, the dark forces. And um, that you probably ought to be put on a pile of wood and burned. Sir, all of my life I have come against that. I'm sure. And what's so funny is I was also raised Roman Catholic, besides Genesean. And so I had sisters of mercy who were praying for me when I was in school. I, I am well aware. They were praying for you? I mean, they, they knew that you were beginning... They knew I was an occultist. They knew I was into natural magic. Oh, um, you must have uh, been something of a thorn in their side. In the beginning, yes, but not later, uh, especially when a particular priest, uh, Father Brockwell, uh, came in and uh, got acquainted with my grandfather and understood exactly where the spirituality and the essence of God force was in our lives. In who, the, who was your grandfather, Evelyn? I beg your pardon? Who was your grandfather? Well, my grandfather was what they call today a maggot. There is a society out there that has a minister, a master, a grandmaster, a doctorate, a high priest, a high priestess, an adept, and a maggot. There's huh. only one other that's higher, and that's an assistimus, and that's like a belly lama. My grandfather was a maggot. He held the seat for over 25 years. And he was a practitioner of the occult for more than 60. Uh -huh. And he trained me. I was initiated at four years old. Of course, he wasn't too pleased that I was a girl. He was thinking it was going to be a boy. But uh, unfortunately, it was a girl, and it was me. Is there a difference, by the way, between uh, the powers one can wield as a man or a woman? No. It's just that most women normally did not uh, reach the heights of occultism, did not study and did not continue. They usually would get married and they would have children and they would usually take care of the home. Oh, yes. And they would not uh, go on to scientific research, investigative end, and they would not spend years of their life in training as I have. I mean, I, was tr I learned how to read sand in my sandbox at five years old. Sand in your sandbox? That's right. Is that, is that, is that a sort of a variation on... Uh, Even Asian. Uh, well, I, know, I was going to say variation on reading chicken entrails. Like that. I learned how to read sand. I learned how to read the tarot. In fact, 
the way the tarot was given to me was absolutely phenomenal and unique. All right, we will get to that and more. It's the bottom of the hour. Uh, we'll have plenty of time. Relax, take it easy. We'll be back in several minutes. Dr. Evelyn Paglini is my guest. She is a witch. So, if all this is going to bother you, turn off your radio. I'm Art Bell, and this is CBC. Art Bell is taking calls on the wild card line. At 702-727-1295. That's 702-727-1295. First time callers can reach Art Bell at 702-727-1222. 702-727-1222. Now, here again, Art Bell. Good morning. From Kevin in Tampa, Florida. Art Bell, a microphone riding trouble stirring talk show host. <laughs> yeah, Kevin, you might be right. And then the first of what I knew was coming in a moment. My guest is Evelyn Paglini. She is she is a practitioner. Uh, Evelyn is a practitioner in the craft. So look, uh, if you are a Christian whose ears are going to be offended, please tune out. I can already see from my taxes. You're not doing that, are you? I'll read one of those in a moment. Uh, for it only has just begun. At the end of time, real talk. It's uh, an AM FM radio, and a doggone good one, too, improved. Uh, there was about a six-month gap, actually, in sales of the last real talk and uh, what we have now extremely sensitive and selective, so a good radio, both on AM and FM. And now it's got built into it an improved one-quarter speed tape deck. Now, what does that mean? Well, why should you care? Well, uh, it's simple. If you are tired of falling asleep and missing this talk show, or perhaps sleeping during the day because you're on this ship and missing uh, Rush or uh, Dr. Laura or the myriad of others who are out there, this is the answer. This is the talk person's radio. Uh, you see, the quarter speed tape deck will, uh, under normal circumstances, would uh, be normal speed and would only record 45 minutes of, of material on one side of a 90 minute tape. But this, you see, will record three hours on one side of a 90, six hours on two sides of a 90. Uh, and by the way, when you buy it from us, you get a free high quality 110 minute tape so you can more than three hours on one side. Now, it's got a timer, so you can set it to come on. It'll begin taping. Turn itself off. Um, now, it won't play in a regular recorder, of course. It's one-quarter speed, and that's why they have constructed this to operate on batteries so that you can plug it in the wall at home, set it to record your favorite talk show, and then take it with you in the car uh, or any el anywhere else. You know, work wherever you want to take it. It's got headphone jacks. A microphone built in. And if you are into talk radio, you've got to have one of these. One forty nine ninety five, and right now we will include a free one hundred and ten minute tape. Extended time real talk. Bob Crane has got it. Call him in the morning at one eight hundred five two two eight eight six three. One eight hundred Five two two eight eight six three. The Sea Cream Company. Are you overweight? Would you like to lose some of it? Sure. Eight to ten pounds in the next month. We can guarantee it. Fiber can guarantee it. And this company. This fiber is kind of sand. It is a natural fiber that comes from shellfish. Not only does it sweep out fat, but along the way absorbs ten times more fat than any other fiber. Therefore. When you buy a 90-day supply of Kytos Slim, you get an antioxidant moisturizing cream, comes along free of charge, and the guarantee is eat as you normally do. If you don't lose the weight, not only do you get all your money back, 
but you keep the cream, and they'd go broke if that guarantee didn't hold. So give it a try. The only thing I can see here you've got to lose is the weight. The number is 1-800-557-4627. 1-800-557-4627. Now, uh, going back to uh, Evelyn Paglini in a moment, um, but here it comes already, Evelyn. Uh, hello, Art. It says... Before you start tonight's show, remember, remember you're not dealing with a witch. You're dealing with Satan himself. <laughs> Do not get lost in this program. If you believe in God, then you have to believe in Satan, and he shows himself in many ways, and that, of course, is Evelyn Peglini. Evelyn, what do you think? Uh, I told you this was coming anyway, somebody apparently who did not heed my warning and uh, decided to sit here and listen and see how evil it would get. Well, first of all, I can understand a person thinking that when you're dealing with uh, witchcraft or Satanism, that that would be a part of the devil only because of their misunderstanding. Uh, I believe in God. I know that my power comes from God. I know that there are uh, religions out there that would prefer to call it the goddess. I think that if you study religions and if you are spiritual, you get to a point where you realize that there is only one religion and there is only one source, and that source is God. And the gifts that he has given me, as well as he has given to other members of my family and so many countless of other people out there, has nothing to do with evil. Yeah, you said you were, though, um, once a Catholic. I am, yes. Yes, my wife, uh, as well as a Catholic, by the way, went out, was raised in Catholic school, all, you know, the whole ball of wax. I was too, sir. Um, and in Catholicism, as well as other religions, uh, yes, there is a God. Um, but there is also uh, Satan. There is also uh, the dark side. Yes, there is. Uh, and uh, I interviewed, I think it was Father Malachi Martin about a week ago. Yeah, what uh, a treasure he is. Yeah, not, not even quite a week ago. And uh, he is one who will tell you without qualification that the devil is real, uh, very, very real. He, he actually does exorcisms. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so you almost began to say, well, there is only one force, and that is God's force. Is that is that really true, or are there other... Well, he is the creator and the omnipotent, the person. Or yes. The greatest power? The greatest power. But that does not mean that there are not other forces out there, that there are not other elementals, that there are not familiars that you can create, mm -hmm. that there is not evocation and summation of beings that you can tap into. But again, depending on what you are doing, why you are doing it, and who you are going to do it for or to mm. is going to make the difference. We were talking about colors uh, in the last half hour, and we ran through all of them. Uh, I have a really nice T-shirt tonight. It's solid black, mm -hmm. and it says www.getalife.com. <laughs> I really like it. Someone just sent it to me, whoever you are. Thank you. Uh, what is the color black? Well, the color black can be used to remove a negativity. In other words, when you think of evil, when you think of the darkness or the dark side, the only color that is representative uh, universally is the color of black. And so therefore when you want to deal with the removing of or the placing on, depending, remember knowledge is a double-edged sword, mm -hmm. then you would use the color of black, whether it be in a black candle or whether it be in an image candle. An image candle? Yes, an image candle is a wax figure in the shape of either a male or a female. And what it does is it presents or represents a subject, an individual that you are going to work on, be it yourself, another family member, a friend, a colleague, or even someone who has done you an injustice. Uh -huh. And so depending on the color of the image candle, what you are doing is making a representation or an effigy. You're going to consecrate it in the individual's name, 
and then after saying a few words, it becomes that individual. And therefore, what you do to it is done to that person. Um, it's a called very, imitative magic. A very, a very simplistic, straight-out question. Uh, is magic real? It most certainly is. I mean, I have, I have no doubt about it. Uh, it. It really is something that works. It really is something that works and it has been around since the beginning of time. Is it, uh, is it an art, Evelyn, that is being uh, rediscovered now uh, or is it becoming increasingly uh, lost as time goes on? What, what do you think is happening to the, uh, the craft? I think it's coming out of the closet. It's been hiding. It's been underground for many, many centuries only because of the misunderstanding that it causes. And today we are going back to natural magic. We are trying to get back in touch with nature and the elements, getting closer to God and to Mother Nature. And so, therefore, it is having a revival. We are now talking about, again, the seers and the saucers and the ancient magicians yes. and the tools that they use. You're seeing shows that are now coming on TV as well as in the movies that are now finally bringing to light what the seers and the magicians were there for. They were there for counsel. They were there for enlightenment. And they were also there for magic. All right. I began talking uh, to my audience about a movie a couple of months ago that I got to see early, earlier than, you know, when it hit the pay services and that sort of thing, called The Craft. Oh, yes. Uh, now, then, at that point, not many in my audience had seen that movie. Now, I suspect many have seen it. And it is about four teenage girls. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as a matter of fact, Evelyn, I may be interviewing the uh, technical advisor to the craft at some point in the near future. I've been invited to do so. But did you see that movie? Yes, I did. Uh, how much of what was represented in that movie to you seemed as though it may be accurate. There was a good representation, um, naturally because it was a movie and they had to entertain. They had to theatricalize it a little bit more. Sure. Um, I, I did feel a little bit remiss when I noticed that in one episode they had all candles of all colors burning. And that would not be done. I mean, that's a wonderful light show, but it certainly isn't going to be doing anything. <laughs> yes. Um, there were certain things that, uh, no, did not belong. But it's okay because it was a movie. Um, was there any truth? Uh, it began uh, with three uh, young ladies practicing dabbling, really, in the craft. And mm -hmm. uh, they maintained to acquire a certain power, they needed a fourth. To call forth, as I recall, um, north, south, east, and west. Right. That's what they felt, and again, that's an error. You do not need a number of people. You can do it yourself. Is though uh, there an is there an opportunity, for example, within a coven where there are many with powers, uh, to multiply the effect? Uh, is it, or is that a total error? No. When you have numbers, especially if they are all honing their talent and concentrating it as a laser beam, very definitely it can become extremely powerful. Now that again depends on those individuals, the path they are walking, and the training they have had. All right. In that motion picture, there was the representation of one young lady, I think she was an African-American young lady who was being a... Uh, 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 assaulted uh, by another young lady in the high school, and as I recall, she plucked a bit of her hair mm -hmm. and then began doing spells and I don't know what all. Um, with that girl's, in, in other words, why is a piece of hair or an article from the person that you wish to affect in a negative way? Uh, in that, in that movie, uh, this young lady's hair began to fall out. <laughs> is such a thing actually possible? Yes, it is. And please understand that you can also affect the positive using the same tools. Of course. So, therefore, it is called 
sympathetic. We were talking about imitative. Imitative was the, the wax figure that you dress and you put a picture on and make look like the person that you are going to be working on, the subject. Sympathetic is that which is in sympathy with the body. And so, therefore, you want the hair okay, the first, the nails. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt, Evelyn. The first, you, you, you said you make a representation of that person. Yes. That sounds almost like voodoo. It is very similar because what you're doing is you are trying to concentrate your mind's attention and focus it on an effigy that is a representation of the person. Is that how voodoo uh, it, it does what it does? Yes, it is. I told you there's a lot of similarities once you get into natural magic. Okay. And to go back to sympathetic, they want something that is in sympathy with the body, that which is close to the body that has the essence, the sweat, the pores of the body. A heck so of hair. The hair, unwashed article of clothing, okay, like a sock, nylon, pants, bra, shirt, T-shirt, Anything that is worn close to the skin. Something intimate. Right. Is sympathetic magic. When you put the two together, imitative to look like, sympathetic that which belongs to, and then you consecrate it in that person's first and last name, you have got exactly what you need, the tools you need to affect what you need to affect on that particular subject. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, you are trying to do something good. Mm -hmm. uh, this can be a tough question uh, to somebody, uh, affect them in a positive way, uh, or you're trying to affect them in a very negative way. Mm -hmm. uh, do the powers to achieve these two very different goals come from different places? No. No, it does not. Um... How are you able to justify the fact that you are using God's power to achieve a negative effect in the real world of magic? Because of justification, the right word that you use, you are never going to, at least if you are walking in the light, if you are walking in balance, and that's what really power and knowledge is really all about, uh, let me digress a minute. My grandfather always said to me, and he drilled it into my head, it's easy to be good when you don't have the tools to do otherwise. Knowledge is power. It is a tool. And it is the hand of the wielder of that power, whether it become positive or negative. So the power itself is neutral. Now, if you have a person who has done you an injustice and you are innocent, mm -hmm. harmed a person and your family, harmed yourself, done something atrocious, naturally what you're going to want is revenge. Mm -hmm. But let's say you don't know for sure if it is that particular person. Well, you never want to harm an innocent individual. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you put in a safety factor. That safety factor is that it only goes back, that's the mirror, that's the boomerang, it only goes back to the person who was the perpetrator. In right. other words, don't send it and you won't receive it. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, again, referring to the craft, because it's most easily referred to and understood by the audience. Uh -huh. In the beginning, when they were doing uh, magic, even in a retaliatory fashion, it was justified and it didn't come back to them. But the tenant was... Do something bad to somebody for an unjustified reason. It will come back to you times three? Ten. Ten. Times ten. Tenfold. Tenfold. Uh, so this is the karmic side to the craft. Um, yes. And there is a karmic side, and there's no way around it. In other words, if you intentionally foist off evil on somebody, yes, you, it can be done, but it will come back to you inevitably? Yes, you will pay the price karmically either in this lifetime or in another. What you have to understand, it is your soul that is important. And so, therefore, when you gain power and you gain knowledge, you are tested. You are tested if you are going to use this acquired power. 
in a negative fashion in order to subjugate another individual or in order to harm an individual because of the whim of you. That's when you are out of balance and you will pay. All right. Uh, we're going to leave that for now and come back to it. And I have lots of good reason to be coming back to that. We will get back to it. But let's take something that's in the middle for a second, Evelyn. Sure. Uh, let's say that somebody wishes financial gain. Now, let's say you do magic that will achieve for yourself financial gain. Mm -hmm. uh, Father, Father Malachi would say you would become, at that point, the perfectly possessed. I'm sure you heard him speak of that. Yes. Um, and that many of the successful people who have money and fame and riches have it because they are perfectly possessed, a state from which they will not recover in this lifetime, okay. according to Father Malachi Martin. Um, this, however, or seeking this, would seem a far less drastic thing than seeking revenge uh, or seeking to do evil against another person. So uh, what would you say about somebody who seeks riches or fame or whatever it is they're after? Uh, do the same karmic laws apply? Only if they use the wealth that they have gained, the riches that they have gained, in, again, in order to harm others. Oh. You see, God does not want us to be poor or to be without. He wants us to have all of the riches of the earth, otherwise they would not have been given. Well, but there would be those who would argue that uh, God would say, yeah, perhaps so, but those who will inherit will be the meek, the poor. The meek means that just because you have the abundance doesn't mean that you're going to get on an ego trip and that you are going to, again, inflict your commands or demands on another only because you have the power to do so. Uh -huh. That's the test of the soul. God is very wise. He gives people wonderful tools, and then he sees what you do with them. We have free will. Easy to be good when you don't have the tools <laughs> to do otherwise. Let me give you a tool. Now let me see what you'll do with it. Um, Evelyn, the difference between, it gets to be a very fine line. For example, I'll use myself as a case because I'm not afraid to. Mm -hmm. I am a very driven person, very, very driven. I'm very, very competitive. Now, I don't, uh, I, I take no joy in uh, doing anything to anybody else. However, I am driven to be the best I can be, and at times that will mean that I, in effect, ride right over somebody else's um, a career butt, if you follow me. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I do this not out of... Um, uh, any any dislike or bad feeling uh, for that person. No, I, I simply do it because, yeah, all right, that's exactly right. That's just business. Right. You're not deliberately envious of the individual where you want to smash him. That's right. I just want to do well, and in that doing well, uh, that's, a, that's a natural occurrence. All right. Evelyn, stay right where you are. We'll be right back. All right? Yes. From the high desert, you're listening to the CBC Radio Network. My guest is Evelyn Paglini, and she's the real thing. Um, all right, uh, this is going to get to, uh, to be fairly heavy as the evening progresses, and you are going to get an opportunity to ask a question. Um, Evelyn, uh, somebody has sent me uh, the following. It is a, sort of a, it's a, uh, a pentagram, I suppose, within a circle, north, south, east, west, and it says, I'd say hi to my sister, meaning you, Evelyn. It says, now is the time, now is the hour. And it shows the north, south, east, west directions. Mine is the magic, mine is the power, aligned straight out of uh, the craft. Um, is there anything to that chance? Is that, is that real or is that Hollywood? There are many times a person will use a chant and a vibration in order to call down a cone of power. They will use symbology, they will use sigils, they will use a pentagram or a hexagram or a circle, especially if they're doing evocation and summation. And yes, chanting does occur. 
Also, when you consecrate instruments, you will also, at times, use a chant. Um, in what way does a chant conjure anything? It is the vibration of the chant and the words and the intent and the desire and the concentration. Remember, it is the mind that is the power and God the source. But you need, at times, tools. And those tools have to be first cleansed and then energized or charged and consecrated. And those tools can be a wand or an atom or a chalice. Mm -hmm. They can be many different instruments that you are going to use. Oh, so in other words, in other words, chants have vibratory power in the same sense that you suggested to me last hour are the colors do. That is correct. That's what we mean by talking about nature and the elements and what has been given to us to use as tools. Right. Vibration is a power. And once you pull down that cone of power, you can learn to direct it. All right. Um, my, my wife is an interesting individual, and I want to cite several instances um, uh, to you with regard to things she has done and just simply draw from you some sort of uh, uh, honest conclusion and say as you will what you will after you hear what you hear. And I think one of them or perhaps two of them you've already heard about. Uh, when I originally decided that I was uh, going to move from Las Vegas simply because it's becoming very crowded, um, I looked for property out here in the uh, this little desert community of Pahrump. The first property I looked at, I'm a ham operator, I like high places. So I looked at a hill, which just happened to be over the hill in Clark County. And uh, it was way up high, and uh, kind of rocky, but way up high and overlooked the entire valley. And I thought, oh, what a cool place, you know, for to live. And I uh, decided and started to buy the property. Now, one of the considerations in being that high was where to find water. It was completely undeveloped land, uh, Evelyn. Mm -hmm. And we used to come out here and sort of sit on the land and contemplate the land and whether we were going to buy it and how we would build and where things would be, you know, the way couples do when they're trying to figure out uh, uh, where they're going to live. And so we were concerned about water, Evelyn, and my wife is a water witch. I should say a divining rod, yeah. Now, this is very, very interesting. Uh, she did this made up with coat hangers, nothing more. Mm -hmm. And she came out one day and walked, oh, she spent a good 45 minutes. The developer was there with me. It was really a funny thing. The developer was there, and my wife spent about 45 minutes walking the land, walking the land. And in the oddest place, in, in a lower left-hand exact corner of the property, she said, here's where the water is. Mm -hmm. And she stood there, and we marked the spot. Well, as it turned out, Evelyn, we were not able to obtain the property. Clark County threw up all kinds of, uh, of flood studies and things that had to be done, and they, they got so in our way on the project with um, bureaucracy that we finally said to hell with you, and we came into Nye County where things are saner and uh, built here. But um, two or three years later, Evelyn, uh, I drove by one day that property, and by God, it was being developed. And here was this this uh, rig drilling for water, and I'm telling you, on this acre-plus piece of land, they were drilling exactly where my wife had put the spot. And bigger than, uh, heck, they hit water right there very easily. Yep. Uh, so what, what does somebody do when they do that? First of all, she is very, very sensitive. And so what she did, and we're talking again about vibration, she used an instrument, a tool that was a coat hanger. You can use a piece of wood. Whatever it is, it is you tapping into and using the tool as a vibration. And once you have walked over the land, you will pick up the actual vibration of water. And that's what she did. Hmm. And she was sensitive enough to tap into it, and she used an instrument, one of the tools that I always say are so wonderful and useful out there. They're there to help us. And so she did something wonderful. 
She found what? She found water. And that is precisely where they drilled. Um, I'll never forget that. All right. There are many people out there who make a living finding oil and finding water by the use of the vining rods. It is a very, very well-known topic and way of finding oil or water. So it's not uncommon. And a benign use of power, yes? A positive use of power. Positive use. Yeah, well, no, that's positive. That's true. Positive. It's positive. No, that's right. Uh, it's positive. No yes. question about it. Uh, now, another little revelation. Early in our relationship, um, my wife delivered the following items to me in uh, all kind of lashed together in a package. She delivered to me a package of forget-me-not seeds, uh, a small package of Hawaiian hazelnut coffee, one small pair of handcuffs, little thumb cuffs, <laughs> left as a gift for me at a certain place. And um, and I looked at this, and I, at the time I had no idea who it was from. I looked at this stuff, and I said, what the hell is this? I mean, it was such an odd, odd combination, a package of seeds, hazelnut coffee, a <laughs> tiny pair of handcuffs. I love it. I'm not going to give out a secret, but, but that is part of when you want to attract a particular uh -huh. person's vibration and bind them to you in their heart. It is called a binding action. She started the process. God love her. <laughs> she is a natural. <laughs> uh, this was within, uh, I would say, a week of our meeting each other. She made up her mind quick. <laughs> <laughs> I want this man. <laughs> uh, then there was it's wonderful. That is a beautiful story. You no, know, I've never told it. There's one more story that the audience has heard, and this one occurred. Um, we've been married, of course, many years now, but this one occurred. I think about a year ago, Evelyn, she could be more specific, but I receive a lot of mail. I receive some horrid things in the mail. Um, people have sent me cat ears, uh, horrible things. I know. And uh, one day, Evelyn, somebody uh, sent this very old doll. And uh, it was, um, you know, a cloth uh, doll, and you could tell it's very, very old. And it was actually singed. And there was a letter that came with it, Evelyn, and uh, this letter was very serious. It was from an individual who had had this doll in their home, and there had been, uh, according to this person, a curse placed upon this doll. And, uh, in fact, this person's home had burned to the ground. This doll... Uh, survived uh, the burning, save a little bit of singeing, but the curse remained on this doll, and I'll be damned if this person didn't send this doll to me. And we opened it up along with this letter indicating what a terrible curse was on it. And for lack of a better phrase, to use a streetism, my wife freaked out when she opened it. I would have too. And uh, she said, uh-oh, and <laughs> I watched her. She ran into the kitchen. She got all the salt mm -hmm. that we had in the house. And she took this doll, lock, stock, box, and barrel out to the dipsy dumpster we've got out there, threw it in, and proceeded to use all of our house salt and covered this doll in salt. That's correct. Really? First line of defense or purification of anything that has a repository of negativity would be salt. Why? Because it is a purifying agent. Second line of defense would be sea salt, even stronger. Third would be sulfur. Sulfur. And fourth would be black salt. Black salt. Yeah. In, uh, They're all purifiers, and what they do is they set up barriers so that that which is negative either cannot get out or get in, depending on which way you are placing it. So she was absolutely right. She picked up the vibration immediately that there was something negative and evil involved in this image doll, mm -hmm. and she wanted not to allow that vibration to get into the home, and it could have, even though it wasn't intended for you. 
I have many artifacts in my altar room that have been given and sent to me only because they have had uh, a curse placed upon them, and they can wreak havoc in a person's life if they are not attended to or destroyed. You have an altar room? Yes, sir. Um, again, referring to the movie uh, The Craft, uh, I recall one portion of it where there was a, there was a room uh, in, in a bookstore um, past which nobody was invited uh, until uh, toward the very end of the movie. And um, what kind of room was that? An altar room. An altar room. I put up. <laughs> <laughs> Only I took exception to all the different colors of the candle, remember? Yes, I do. Uh, but, I mean, there are, there are such rooms. And they you... are rooms that we all can have a temple or a sanctuary or a church. It is a place where you go and you do your spiritual work, whether it is work on yourself or your loved ones or others. Mm -hmm. And what you do after a while, because you have consecrated and you have cleansed and you have energized, that particular area, it builds up its own vibration and power. So it is, again, another source of power. Just like when you go to a church constantly and you pray. Sure. That is sacred ground. Just like the Indians have a sacred burial ground. It is because of the rituals they have performed and the spirits of their ancestors who stay there and guard it. All the same. Not so different. Every culture has their altar, their temple, their sanctuary, their church. Um, what is it that the Native American peoples uh, uh, do? Is it is it akin? To, is there something they do that is akin to the kind of um, you know? Is magic the right word? Is it fair to yeah, use the word magic? magic? It's natural oh, magic. Natural magic. Yeah. Is, is that what they, they do? They use herbs. They use. They're phenomenal with herbs. They're fantastic. They use animal spirits. They are very, very good at the shape shifting, and there are not too many cultures out there that are have that ability. They're extremely psychic and very spiritual. When you say shape shifting, yes. you mean uh, as in converting oneself, for example, to a wolf? That is correct. You believe that can actually be done? Yes, it can. You can also create a familiar using a thought, becoming a form, and then sending that familiar in whatever disguise you have made it, meaning animal, okay, or bird, and you can send it out to do your bidding. A familiar. Yes, a familiar. It could be a bird. It could be any animal. It can be any animal. Are there, are there some animals? Are there some animals? Excuse me, Evelyn, with more power or who are more easily um, adaptable? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. There are there are some, but basically you can use any animal. All you have to do is tap into the vibration and the soul and the power of that animal and what it's used for, and very definitely you can use it. Again, how do you use it? Uh, cats, for some reason, in my case, have always seemed mystical uh, and very, very interesting creatures, um, and, and I have three of them. <laughs> um, and there have been references to cats frequently. What about cats? Are they good always familiars? Have been. They have been excellent as uh, familiars. Uh, they have been used oh, back into Egypt time. You had a cult that was Bas, and that was the cat. The and Egyptians they, worshipped cats, did they not? Absolutely, yes, they did. And they also used them as familiars. They also used them as guards. Also in China they did, and I, I believe still do. <laughs> so cats, uh, small as well as large. The panthers have been used by a particular society that I'm well aware of. It's another cat. Yes that uh, if a particular individual that belonged to that society stepped out of bounds, it was usually uh, the cat or the spirit of that animal that did the work to put the person into silence. Mm, put them into silence. I'm being kind. <laughs> yeah, I could tell you are. 
Um, all right, it's the bottom of the hour, uh, Evelyn, and I would like to have you uh, hold on. We will get phone calls, folks, so hang in there. Uh, Evelyn, stand by. We'll be right back. From the high desert, this is CBC, and I'm Art Bell. All right. Um, Art, great show tonight. Predicted it will go down in the archives as a classic. I have two important questions for Evelyn tonight. I doubt the majority of people will want to hear them. And, again, that reminds me, if you are offended by the kind of discussion we're having this night, turn your radio to another station or off or go watch TV or something. We're talking about the craft. I'll be up front with you. The craft. Um, Evelyn, um, might as well get in trouble right now. Uh, this comes from a listener. If you could say something to the Ralph Reeds, Jerry Falwells, Pat Robinsons of the world, what would it be? that they have not achieved a true level of spirituality. Otherwise, they would know that they're, like there is only one race, there is only one God. And just because there are differences in cultures in the names or the way that they worship that God doesn't mean that those people will not find the same place in heaven as they are. Mm -hmm. Um, the second question, there is an obvious war going on in the world right now, just not in this country, of the left versus right. And here I refer not just to politics, but to a worldwide spiritual battle. Please comment on these antagonistic entities. Well, I don't quite understand where he's coming from. Uh, well, I guess basically um, he's referring to an ongoing or perhaps even... Uh, increasing level of war between good and evil? The more knowledge that people have, in other words, there are a proliferation of excellent books that are out there that are now giving exposure, and these people are taking and gaining this knowledge, and again, they are being tested. And unfortunately, they are failing the test. And so, yes, in that instance, there is a growing concern that negativity is on the rise because of the usage of the individuals that are playing with it. They, soul-wise, are in ignorance and unfortunately are being handed weapons that they should not and cannot comprehend. Let us discuss a little bit of the nature of what you believe the soul to be, Evelyn. Uh, I firmly believe that we have something within us that survives a physical death uh, but I'm unsure of its uh, of its makeup, I guess. Uh, what would you say of the soul? What is our soul? I think the best way to describe it is the soul is the spark of the divine. It is the breath of the creator, and so therefore it is eternal. What we here are doing are experiencing humanness or humanity, or the physical plane of existence. But we are eternal. We have many incarnations uh -huh. prior to the present, uh -huh. and we will have other incarnations after this. Firmly a believer in reincarnation. Firmly. It is an evolutionary soul cycle on its way back to its creator. It's almost like an implosion and an explosion. Evelyn, um, we have many, many more people in the world today than we had 100 or 200 years ago or 1,000 mm -hmm. uh, by uh, literally billions. And uh, so an obvious question is, uh, if there is reincarnation, then where are all the souls coming from? They are coming from prior existences, not only on this plane, but on other planes, other planets, and other dimensions. Also, on this plane of existence, there can be an interim or a time span before that soul will incarnate again. Some will incarnate very rapidly, sometimes within just a few years. Others will take a hiatus for maybe a hundred to five hundred or a thousand years. You will choose the time, the environment, and the parents and the economic situation that will afford your soul the best opportunity to fulfill its next charge. 
There was uh, another movie, and I, I, I refer to movies because it's something the uh, audience can identify with, and I can. Um, I mean, you are into things uh, so deeply that we could get beyond uh, we could co we could get beyond uh, their ability and my ability, for that matter, to comprehend uh, what we are discussing. There was once a movie called The Seventh Sign with Demi Moore, mm -hmm. and its basic contention was that there uh, that the number of souls are finite, and that when the last soul incarnates uh, into a body, uh, the guff or the, the the place where the souls are kept would be empty, mm -hmm. and uh, the end of all would begin. Um, is that uh, is that is that a false? Uh, it, it, it's a metaphor. It's okay, a metaphor. It, it's like many times when you are reading the Bible, you find that there are levels of awareness, and there are riddles that are put in that you have to decipher depending on the consciousness or the level of awareness of your of your mind. And what it's saying is that when all of the souls have incarnated and lived this particular existence, then life as we know it and as the world knows it ceases to exist because now we go on to another dimension, into another realm and another existence. Um, is there? No, we're dealing with physical here. Is there uh, to this all an end? In other words, uh, is there a time uh, when, if in effect, um, well, I, I recall, for example, the Rancho Santa Fe suicides. Uh, in their suicide note, uh, they suggested it is time now for their graduation. Graduation, an interesting term. Is there a time? When you do not once again uh, incarnate, when you are done, when you have graduated, when you are finished? It depends on the school of philosophy or thought that you follow. Many believe that once you have achieved a particular level of awareness, mm -hmm. you may choose to come back and walk the land as a teacher, as a savior, as a guru, as an enlightened master in order to help others to that stage of enlightenment. Others feel that they will go to the beyond, another dimension. If they have fulfilled all that is there, then that what they have done is become of the oneness again. Okay. But, but you're talking eons of time. That's again the implosion and the explosion. Okay. Um, Evelyn, have you ever seen a a, a, really a, a demonstration, a demonstrable uh, manifestation of magic. Uh, and when I say that, I mean an actual, how to put it, uh, from the layman's point of view, something that uh, uh, the manifestation of, of an evil entity, have you seen things moved? Have you seen uh, people affected either positively or negatively beyond uh, challenge? Uh, what real manifestations of magic performed have you either seen or done? Quite a bit. First of all, you are able, and I have seen this, um, I was a young girl, about 19, and I went to a woman who was very, very powerful, very magically inclined, and what she did is she took a dish, and mentally with her mind, she teleported or threw it, okay, up against the wall, and it sna naturally smashed into many pieces. And then with the power of her mind, she gathered them back into its original semblance. You saw that? I saw that with my own eyes. In fact, my father was present. He's the one who took me. What she did, which always stuck in my mind, is that even though when she brought all of the pieces together, she turned to me and she said, but only God can make it whole. And it was, it just, it reached me. Again, I've had many, many lessons and I have seen power. Yes, you can take and affect a person a thousand, ten thousand miles away. You can, with just adjustability, make an individual sick, let alone calling down a cone of power and using imitative and sympathetic magic. Distance is not an object. 
Distance has never been an object, no. The only limitation is the practitioners. <laughs> Let's for a second discuss ghosts. Um, I, I have had many guests and much evidence presented indicating that uh, for some odd reason, uh, occasionally souls uh, appear to get trapped on Earth mm -hmm. in some horribly repetitive, uh, frequently repetitive uh, motion. And it's hard to tell whether we are seeing a soul which has not left this plane yet, uh, damned to repeat something again and again, uh, or whether we are seeing some sort of weird echo of what was uh, repeating again and again. And I, I could give many, many examples. The people of San Antonio, Texas, well know, for example, uh, that there was a, I'm going to give you an example, there was a school bus full of children years ago that was caught on a train track, and a train came along and smashed into this bus, killing all the children. Um, and this has been tested again and again and again, Evelyn. You can, yes, uh, I know it. You can go to this crossing, stop your car, put it in neutral, uh, and just sit there and um, uh, on the crossing, and something, some, some power will push your car, and the people down there know this is true, mm -hmm. off those tracks and off that crossing, and they have gone so far as to sprinkle... Uh, a powder on the back of the car, and what they end up with uh, after this car has been moved off the tracks by some unseen force are the marks of children's hands on the back of the vehicle that has pushed it out of the way. Yes. Um, that's a true story, Evelyn. It yes. still goes on today. Now, so, so what are ghosts? Spirits or entities that have not crossed over into the light some have chosen to stay behind because they have left something undone. Some choose to become a guardian angel of the family they want to watch over. Others will stay behind for guidance or even to give warning. And some are trapped because of what has taken place in their life or at the moment of their death. And they can, at times, repeat a particular scenario or there will be those spirits that I have, because I've done many, many house cleansings, many. And I've worked with spirits, ghosts, and hauntings for the last 35 years. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, I, I remember one time going and doing a cleansing on a home that belonged to a policeman in the city of Chicago. In fact, when he came to me, he said it was the only thing that ever brought him to his knees in 17 years on the course, and he had seen it all. But it had attacked his wife and his children. And lo and behold, once we made contact with the spirit or the entity, it was a woman who had not only been abandoned by her husband but by her son. And her bitterness and her rage and then her confinement in that home and subsequent death there permeated. You know, they say walls have ears. Well, the energy permeated and her soul was trapped there. And she was very, very vicious to anyone that would live in that home. And so finally, a exorcism had to be performed so that she was able to cross over into the light. The one part of this that I've never quite understood in struggling to understand whether a soul is really trapped here or whether it's some sort of strange echo is, for example, somebody who will have unrequited love uh, is just deeply, passionately in love uh, in the most desperate way with somebody, um, at uh, perhaps uh, love not returned, um, uh, and whose life is taken at that moment of passion, uh, would appear also to remain trapped. Mm -hmm. um, now, that person has not done evil in any way that I can discern, uh, and so it's seemingly uh, repeat repetitively doing something again and again and remaining trapped on her, that seems like uh, punishment of the damned. But why, and yet this person has not really done anything evil, so why are they stuck in that way? I wish I had a real good answer. I know from those spirits that I have made contact with, and one was something very similar to that, the energy 
and the desire to stay with that loved one was so great that they would not allow themselves to turn to the light. In other words, when that which came for them to help them cross over, they refused. Their, their energy was so strong that it kept them earthbound and therefore trapped them. And those are very, very sad souls. Yes, that is sad. Um, that is sad indeed. But it is their choice. Oh, their choice. They have chosen this they then. Chose they chose uh, could not they, leave. they couldn't give up. They couldn't let go. They could not let go. Uh, how do you, if you go into a house where there is something like this going on, a home or, or a place, whatever, how do you, how do you get the spirit to let go? What you do is first establish contact, and you can do that in many ways. Uh, you can also do it in a seance. Once you have established contact with the individual, you try to find out just exactly why they are there, why they are trapped. Is it something left undone? Is it something that they wish to take care of? Is isn't there, isn't there, they want to give? Isn't there terrible danger, though, in a seance? In other words, uh, if Over you... the layman, yes, it must be done by a professional. Otherwise, you're opening up the door and you can get more than you bargained for. And that's happened to a lot of people. Has it ever happened to you? No, it has not. Again, my training. Uh-huh. Um, I, also, I put up a shield of protection before I do a seance, and any of those people that are participants, they also will have a shield of protection before I ever open up the door. So don't, down. the advice is don't try this at home. No, this is not something that you have fun with. This is not for entertainment purposes. No. Yeah, we're, we're going to touch on that. Relax, take a break. We'll be back to you and now, back to Evelyn Paglini. For those of you who are requesting contact information, uh, we'll get to it. Hold on. Evelyn, are you there? I'm here. All right. Uh, Evelyn, um, here's a fax I just received. Art, you're doing a wonderful job of spreading Lucifer's <laughs> word. You have a blasphemer on your show and support the message that she spews forth. You, as well as your guests, will burn in the fiery pit of hell from Dan in Quincy, Illinois. What do you think? You're going to feel the flames, Evelyn? No, I'm not going to feel the flames. The only thing I'm going to do is again say that the person has not reached a level of awareness. He has not crossed the threshold of enlightenment. His soul has not reached spirituality. Otherwise, he would not condemn a person for their belief. Uh, um, indeed. All right, uh, one more, and let's see how you answer this. Uh, whenever I have a show dealing with this kind of material, Mark, uh, uh, an about atheist in Louisiana, faxes me, says something like this. All right, maybe Evelyn didn't hear about the incident the other day where a woman gave birth to a baby in a public toilet and left it there to die. What kind of God would allow this to happen? The fact is, there is no God. The sooner everyone accepts this, the better, from Mark in Louisiana. That's a very hard and difficult question, and I'll tell you the only thing I thought of, because I had had a lot of my own clients ask me why this could happen, and I said, only God in his wisdom would understand. Maybe there is lessons that not only the individual will learn by her actions, also because that soul has touched many, many individuals worldwide, not just nationally. Mm -hmm. And it is all in how those people around are affected and how they react to it. There are many times a tragedy will happen to a person because it is the will. And it is how do other people's reaction to that act affect their soul and their growth. Um, there are two ways to vent anger and hatred uh, and the feeling for revenge. Um, one is the obvious with the physical, and the other is the kind of work you do. Now, uh, as we move to discuss the darker side of things, is it possible? Uh, let me reform this question, Evelyn, uh, in my own way. I discussed uh, with the audience some weeks 
or was it months ago now, an event in my life um, which uh, uh, was very extremely traumatic. Uh, in other words, I get without giving details away, somebody came at me or my family in a way as to do us deadly harm. Um, and I, I spent a few nights talking about revenge on the air, something the audience didn't understand because they don't understand, nor have I been able to explain to them uh, what occurred. And I still cannot explain to my audience what has occurred. The day may come when I can do that, and I certainly will at that point. And I have a lot to say about it. I, I, my lips are sealed at this moment. Suffice it to say, somebody has come after me in a deadly way. And um, I have reason to want possibly deadly revenge on this person. And I have confided in you um, what this person has done. You know what it is. Yes. And um, I guess I first would ask you, uh, after consideration, uh, whether you feel that what I explained to you, what I told you about, is sufficiently dastardly uh, to justify uh, the use of deadly uh, magical uh, force against this person. I would have to say, based on what you told me, you have justification. Is it possible, with magic, to take someone's life? Yes, unfortunately, it is possible to take someone's life with magic. Uh, is this something... Uh, now, again, I'm going to go back to the... Uh, theatrical venue to recall a movie, I know, maybe a book, I don't know if it was a movie or a book, it was, it was um, a Stephen King thing, I think, and I recall, that was a book, and um, this man had a curse put upon him by a gypsy who simply one day came and touched his forehead and said, Tanner, or Tan, I can't recall, it's a long time ago I read the book, and slowly, uh, but surely, uh, despite the best medical efforts of everybody involved, away. this man wasted away mm -hmm. and got thinner and smaller and emaciated and finally uh, the inevitable. Um, is that the manner in which something like this is done or how is it done, Edelman? That is the result of what can be achieved by the concentration and the laser beam that you send to another individual. You can have them waste away. You can have them have instant karma for their actions. You can have other people around them turn against them. You can have beings and demons that no one sees but him reach him and touch him. There are many ways to affect people. All right. We discussed earlier um, karma, and that if you if you uh, do a negative thing to somebody without justification, key key phrase without justification, we'll come back to you times ten. Uh, if this person has harmed you in a deadly, um, unforgivable what manner, and I I am not a forgiving person. I am a person who comes back at whoever comes at me. I I I've done that all my life, Evelyn. Uh, one way or the other, in the physical or if it can be done elsewise, elsewise, doesn't matter to me. I don't turn the other cheek. Uh, and I don't, uh, I don't allow people to trump over me. In this case that we're now discussing, uh, you know I'm not going to allow that to occur one way or the other. That is correct. And you have an exceptional case, and that's the difference. You're not coming because someone has insulted you or put you down, no, no. or talk behind your back. No, no. You're coming from real justification. Serious, deadly Serious, harm. And deadly so justification. I am prepared Absolutely. to return uh, in time. Now, 
uh, that would mean that, comically, I would not soon be paying times 10. No, you would not. And neither would any person who you went to to help assist or perform. Because all you're doing is setting up a mirror and the person is receiving what they have sent. They have given was deadly. So in return, the mirror sends it back. Justification. You are innocent. All right, I, I wanted to ask that. Um, and I, I will proceed with you privately uh, in this arena. Uh, so, anyway, uh, turning to another subject, I'm getting a million faxes here, and we are going to shortly open the phones. Um, what does Evelyn think of the Ouija board? Uh, there are many people who dabble uh, in fun, at parties, fun time, get together, let's uh, get out the old Ouija board and see what it does. Uh, what do you say to those folks? You know, I've done a couple of columns on that particular subject in newspapers, and the Ouija board is, again, not a toy. It is not something that should be for entertainment because it is another tool where you are opening up the door and you, again, can get more than you bargained for. Now, those people who are trained, who are sensitive, they can receive information that can be extremely beneficial. In fact, one person was given a warning and stopped a very, very serious crime from happening. But... 90% of the time, it is the average layman out there that is playing the game and usually getting hurt because they are, they have absolutely no training and they open up the door and they allow spirits in, low entity beings that are just looking for a receptacle and they have just provided one. Bottom feeders. That's right. And we are bottom. <laughs> so you could open a door and something could truly come through. Oh, that. yeah. That or even having seances. I warn people all the time, do not have a seance for the fun of it because you want to contact your old Uncle Charlie. Mm -hmm. Because you may not get Uncle Charlie. And if you do not have a bona fide trance medium with, with the knowledge of how to conduct properly a seance, you are putting yourself and any other person in that room in danger. Because they can take over your bodily functions and your vocal cords because you are inviting them to do so. So, yes, you must be very careful when you are dealing with spirit communication on any form. Have you seen uh, a person possessed in such a manner? Yes, I have, several times. Is there anything uh, short of what Father Malachi Martin does that can be done to deal with that? Is there, for example, within your craft yes. something that can be done? What would you do? It is very similar. What you do is you take on that spirit or that entity, and it is a war between the two of you. And what they gain is either they lose the habit of the body that they are inhabiting, or they not only have theirs, but they have you. And what you do is you go in and you go to war. You demand that they release that body and that spirit, and that they go. And it can sometimes be hours and sometimes days before you achieve the desired result in exercising that spirit or that entity from that person. And as you call for it, you call for it in the name of? When I call for it? Yes, if you call for this what spirit or this entity you, to leave. Yeah, you conjole it, all right, you, you sometimes irritate it, you sometimes get sarcastic. What you want it to do is show its power. You want to find out what are you dealing with. Are you dealing with a low entity being or spirit, meaning one that has held human form? Or are you dealing with a hierarchy, a supernatural being, one that has not held human form? Because based on what you are dealing with and based on the background of that individual or that spirit or that being, then you are going to pull down specific powers. Now, if it is Christian, then they would respond to the crucifix and holy water and those prayers. But if they do not belong to that culture or religious persuasion and they belong to another, then you must use those artifacts, those gods and those spirits, okay, that they are indeed familiar with. So you 
would have to make a study. So in other words, there could be a case of possession uh, for which Father Malachi Martin might not be the right agent, but you might be. That is correct. Yes, absolutely. Because there are spirits out there that would laugh at the cross. And holy water would not affect them whatsoever. And what? I have come across those. And what would... What, what, for example, uh, I know you cannot be specific because every case is specific, but just as a, a discussion example, holy, holy water or a cross might not work, but what might? There are certain seals, certain sigils, and there are certain elementals, and there are certain beings that you can call upon to assist you. Just as they would use a crucifix and holy water, there are certain tools and artifacts and herbs that we can use, as well as them calling down the source of the Jesus Christ consciousness power. There are other spirits and beings whose names we have that we call upon that will do the job. Ellen, are there aspects of the craft that are simply uh, too sensitive to be discussed in a public forum like this? Yeah, there are certain aspects, yes. You don't want to give... There's enough out there in books for people to go and quench their thirst. But the most important thing is that they have balance in their life, balance within their soul. Otherwise, the power that they are going to acquire, they are not going to handle properly. There should be some kind of tutelage, some kind of training... Okay, some kind of person who is going to give them some guidance. I know I had wonderful guidance. I, I had the balance brought in me. I understand what the power is and how to use it. If somebody who senses that they are a natural comes to you and wants instruction, uh, not necessarily for positive reasons, but uh, like those young ladies in the craft, the movie The Craft, they want to pursue the dark side and they're upfront with you about that and want your guidance. How do you handle that? They are rejected. A person came to me and was very upfront with me and said, I want to gain this knowledge or this power so that I can use this in order to subjugate other individuals, not a chance. Not a chance. There are many others that will go and find them. I will not. That is not the way I was taught. That was not the way I was raised. And that is not the way I believe. And I cannot give the kind of power and the kind of knowledge that I have acquired to someone that is not in balance. I will not do it. A couple of months ago, uh, Evelyn, I was in Mexico. Uh, I favor, I like Mexico, I go to Mexico when I get the chance. And I happened to walk into an herb store in Mexico, and in the rear of the store there was a very, I thought, ominous-looking altar um, with, um, with, a, with a figure of some sort in the middle of the altar. Um, what was I probably seeing? In the figure in the middle of the altar, depending on the culture, may have been a demigod or a spirit that they are calling upon for guidance, assistance, energy, power. Whatever, huh? Whatever. All right, Evelyn, stay where you are. We'll be right back at the bottom of the hour. We're about to go to the phone, so if you want to get through and have a question, now would be the time. From the high desert, I'm Art Bell. Going back now to Dr. Evelyn Paglini, uh, who practices the craft and um, has been doing so all her life and her father before her. Uh, if this sort of program and material uh, causes you distress or bothers you, turn your radio off, do not listen, go listen to uh, rock and roll or something. Uh, all right, uh, Dr. Paglini, I, Evelyn, um, w by the way, what should I call you? Well, you can call me Evelyn. Evelyn, <laughs> All right. Um, if somebody wanted to contact you uh, for more information or uh, to discuss a matter with you, uh, much as I have privately, how would they do that? Is there a way? There are several ways. All right. For 
those who want to email me, that would be QEP at MSN.com. For those who would like to phone me, that would be 818-783-2995. And for those who would like to do snail mail, that is Paglini, P-A-G-L-I-N-I, at P.O. Box 57932, Sherman Oaks, two words, California, 91413. And they can also visit my webpage. All right. Uh, one thing. That, oh, you have a webpage. I should have asked. All right. Uh, give the address, please, once more, because I couldn't quite write it, which means they couldn't. So. Okay. The address is Paglini, P A G. L I N I uh-huh. at P O Box five seven nine three two in Sherman Oaks S H E R M A N Oaks O A K S California nine one four one three. Okay, and you have a website? Yes. Oh, my, I should have known that before. I, what is your website, please, and we'll get a link up to it. It is www.mysticalblend.com. Uh, that's www.mysticalblend, one word. One word. Dot com. Yes. And what is there? The uh, catalog that I sent you. Yes. That has all this wonderful information on herbs and essential oils and some tools that people can use in order to help achieve their desired goals. There are two forms of the craft. One is a protective form, uh, is it not? And the other is, um, for lack of a better word, I guess, an offensive form. Mm -hmm. Uh, By far, I would think the greatest percentage of practice would be in the uh, defensive form. Yes, it is. But if you have knowledge, you are able to do both. That's the idea. All right. Um, One more question, then we'll go to the phones. Um, Evelyn, you mentioned that as long as one is attempting to enhance one's career and or wealth without malice, it's okay. Yes, it is. Absolutely. He goes on, how about those who use the occult in their pursuit of international trade deals, sell access to information pertaining to national security and trade policy, which can severely damage a nation's sovereignty. In other words, they're asking, is your view purely globalist, or would such a uh, an action uh, as selling one's uh, secrets, the secrets of one's nation, be an evil thing? That would be an evil thing. That is not acquiring or attempting to acquire prosperity or money or better business or recognition or fame in order to help your loved ones, your colleagues, and mankind in general. In other words, I said before, God doesn't want you to be poor, but that doesn't mean because you have riches that you are supposed to use that in order to inflict pain on others Mm -hmm. or cause them or, or jeopardize them or put them in danger. It's, again, once you acquire the tool and you know what it can do, how do you use it? That's where the evil or the Satan comes in and tempts you. You're not tempted unless you have the power to do something. All right, here we go. Money's power. Yeah, yeah, it is. You're damn right it is. Um, First time caller line, you're on the air with Evelyn Paglini. Hello. 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 Um, Where where are you? I'm in in Madera, California. All right. Um, Dr. Paglini, it's great to finally hear somebody who makes a lot of sense regarding this because when I was a lot younger, it was Stuff like this, I mean, I got so many mixed opinions about it, and you just make it all sound clear. And Art, it's great to finally be on the show. Um, before I ask my question, can I go ahead and give a little background about myself? Uh, if you think it's relevant. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm 16, and I just recently started, you know, I just started dabbling in some of the lesser workings of what um, some might call the occult, you know, the tarot and, palm, and you know, palmistry and stuff like that. Originally, I was just doing it as a, as a means to get attention at my school, and the first reading I did was for my mother, and that really turned me on to this whole thing because it was just so clear. And so my question is, you know, now that I'm wanting to get into some of the deeper stuff, um, there's not too many covens around here. There's nobody to really tutor me. 
So with the stuff that's in bookstores right now, um, could I possibly, is there anything I could gleam off of that, or is that just a lot of runaround? There are excellent books out there, and just because you can't find a coven, there are many learning exchanges and universities and organizations out there that certainly have those classes available to you with very fine instructors. Yeah, well, and it's not like you can open the yellow pages under covens, you know. Right, and, uh, right. And just find one. How, how, just as a matter of curiosity. Psychology and organizations and, and paranormal organizations and find them. So they are, they are, they can be located. Yes, you just got to know where to look. All right, that young fellow was 16 years of age. Again, referring back to the craft. Mm-hmm. And to uh, many, many stories of poltergeists and uh, unusual activity, things flying through the air, uh, weird stuff going on, it seems like young people, particularly young women, teenage girls, uh, seem to have an aura of power about them. Is there anything to that? Yes, very much so. We are definitely raising our vibration and our consciousness Latent psychic ability, which all people have, is rising to the surface. Many people have been having precognition. They have been having very intuitive and prophetic dreams. And so, therefore, our sixth sense or our insight or second sight is rising to the surface by leaps and bounds. And the younger generation is showing it even more profusely. A wild card line, you're on the air with Evelyn Paglini, doctor, actually. Welcome to the program. Where are you, please? Uh, yes. Well, I can barely hear you. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Where are you? I'm in Deer Trail, Colorado. Okay. Okay, um, I think I wanted to make more of an observation than a question. I am Wiccan Christian, and I have young children, and I am in the process of teaching them discipline of thinking Oh, gosh, I guess what I want to say is to, to discipline them to not think negatively. Um, I think it needs to be expressed that, especially for teenagers, that this is not a game. You must be careful with what you're working with. This is a very real energy, and without even intending to, you can send a negative energy to someone without meaning to. Um, but it is not a game. It is a discipline. That's a very good point. Um, Evelyn, is it possible that somebody who is a natural uh, can harm others subconsciously, almost subconsciously, not consciously? In other words, uh, again, uh, I keep going back to motion pictures, but you remember Carrie, uh-huh. of course. And uh, this young girl was persecuted by many around her in many ways. And finally, not fully consciously, but in the beginning, subconsciously began to lash out and hurt people with her power. Absolutely. It has been done for a long time and it is on the increase today. And she's very correct. That's what I talked about when I said my training. That is the discipline that is required. And yes, you can start the child in infancy, three, four years old as I began. And therefore, the discipline becomes inherited and ingrained. And the more power and knowledge that they achieve, the more balance they have because of the structure and the foundation that they have been given. And any person that's an adult that goes out to seek or this quest has to make sure that the tutor or the master or the guru that they definitely are going to be involved with is in balance. And the best way to find that out is to test them. And how is that done? Watch them in action. Watch them in front of others that are possibly within the society or the group and see how they treat them, how they react, what they will do against them, what they will do for them, what knowledge they will expose, what will they extract. Evelyn, have, uh, are you able to recognize another practitioner when you are in their presence? Yes, I am. Is this just something you feel? Is it yeah, something it's a you vibration. know? It's a no. It's a vibration. It's a huh? vibration. It's a knowing. It's an energy. Have you ever met anybody who scared you? I would have to say when I was in Jamaica, uh, yes, I met a person that 
certainly would have to be a, a person who has crossed over and given themselves to evil. The, the vibration reeked of it. The power was substantial. All right. East of the Rockies, you're on air with Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Where are you calling from, please? I'm calling from Elmore, Ohio. Yes, sir. My name is Zachary. Um, it's an honor to speak with both of you. I've really enjoyed your show tonight. Thank you. Um, I'm 20 years old, and I've always been interested in this subject. Um, I've kind of been thirsty for knowledge of it from a very early age, and all I've had to go by was the media, such as, you know, film and stuff, which you've referred to a lot tonight. Um, but I was able to get a hold of a book called The Power of the Witch by Lori Cabot, and, uh, it was an incredibly resourceful book, and in it she talks about a state called Alpha, in which you can tap into your psychic powers uh, and talk with goddesses and stuff. And uh, she tells you in the book to close your eyes and open your mind's eye, which you're supposed to picture in the center of your forehead. And it says it takes practice, and I tried it, and it, it seemed to, my eyes wanted to open, and she said that would happen because you are trained to only see with your eyes open. You cannot, you, you are telling yourself that you can't see with your, with your eyes closed because, you know, we're brought up to believe that, you know, you, you can only see what's in front of you. And um, it actually happened and it, you, suppo you supposedly can travel out of your body and see things, I guess that would be technically flying. You're talking about a second sight or soul travel? Yes. Yes. Uh, all right, that's a good question. We've discussed that any, uh, in many ways on this program, Evelyn. Um, such thing possible? Uh, yes, very much so. The only thing I'm going to say is that uh, Hayden having difficulty uh, with his eyes being closed and wanting to be open, what you can do is there is a technique that when you drop yourself, see, you have four brain wave levels. Beta, Alpha, Theta, Delta. Alpha is your creativity and inspiration. And what you are attempting to achieve is that level. A deep meditation will bring you to that level. And once you are there, your inner eye, your second eye will definitely open. Now, that has nothing to do with astral projection. All right, astral projection is another technique. And you can travel astrally. Spiritually, you can also mentally travel. And that is an entirely different technique. But once you achieve the levels of meditation, yes, those doors will open for you and you can do quite a bit. Now, something many have asked when we touch on this topic, uh, Doctor, is that when you're out of your body or your soul is out of your body, mm -hmm. uh, you are subject or more subject to possible outside influences. In other words, you open yourself to... Other dimensions, other beings, and that's why you need to put usually a, a shield of protection or ask a spirit guide to come in and assist you. Uh -huh. All right. West of the Rockies, you're on the air with Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Hello. Good evening. I'm calling from Washington State. Washington State. All right. Speak up good and loud for us. All right. I'm pleased to hear you discussing this topic. I heard Evelyn the first time she called into your show. Late in the show, yes. Yes, and I did miss the first 45 minutes of this show. Uh, I'd like to ask two questions. First of all, Evan, Evelyn, I have not heard you say specifically that you are a witch. Are you indeed a witch? I do not belong to any Wiccan organization. I did say that in the beginning. I am Genesean, which is another pagan religion a little older than witchcraft. I see. But when he said... Wiccan, which is the craft of the wise, because I am a practitioner of natural magic, I would indeed have to say that I am Wiccan. I see. Um, my other question is, how do you feel about the new pagan movement and all the different sorts of groups and practices that are defining themselves as I Wiccan? I think it's wonderful. As long as people's soul is on an evolutionary positive cycle of growth, Getting back to nature and the elements is positive. Yes, I And know. I don't care if it's Dianic or Gardnerian or Saxon or Hecate. I don't care what it is. As long as you get back to nature and the elements, and as long as you have spiritual growth and balance within your soul, then you're fine. 
there are many paths that lead to God. You know, yeah. some go around the mountain, some go through the mountain, some go over a mountain, and there are those who know there's no mountain there at all. Mm. Yes, I agree. Uh, again, I'd like to say I'm pleased to hear the subject being discussed. Uh, I've been a practitioner for 18 years. Oh, you have? Yes. What led you to it? Um, uh, when I stumbled upon the information, uh, what led me to it in the first place actually was a roommate who introduced me to it. And um, I had the feeling of remembering, of being comfortable and at home. It seemed natural to me. Uh, the principles and, and ethics and ways of practicing those things. Natural. Very natural. I appreciate your call, Evelyn. Are there many, are there more naturals today uh, than there were or fewer? What's happening in the world? Because we are entering into, and have already entered, but we're only like seconds into the age of Aquarius. We have now the dawning of this age, and with it, the evolution of spirituality. And people are definitely going to go back to nature and the elements. That's going home. That's touching the earth and its source and its force and its power. And when you do that, you touch God. All right, Evelyn, are you good for another hour? Sure. Back now to my guest, Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Doctor, uh, we have now, by the way, a link. Uh, my webmaster, as soon as he heard you mention your website, got a link up to your website. So if everybody out there would like to see Evelyn's website, go on up to mine, www.artbell.com, and you will see um, uh, near Evelyn's name or um, adjacent to her name a link to her site. Hit that. And you'll be on your way to her site, which is www.mysticalblend.com. And some people were having trouble with that spelling. So just go up to my site, and you will see the link there. Now, uh, there, uh, you know, when this occurs, there are going to be millions of hits suddenly, and I hope her site can hold up or not find out. At any rate, there is a link presently. Uh, thank you very much, Keith on the mark as usual. Also, for those of you who had not heard uh, the beginning of the program, we have an exclusive photograph on our website of something that is quite remarkable. It is the Salem Slayton, Oregon crop circle. We have got exclusive aerial photography of that provided by a very nice lady by the name of Marianne Koch. And you will see it on the site now. This particular crop circle uh, would appear to be one of the simpler but very well-defined crop circles, very, very much like the early ones in England. And if crop circles are, as we have come to suspect, a teaching process, then the lessons have begun. You might want to definitely take a look at that. It is quite a remarkable site, uh, very, very good aerial photography, and an exclusive also at www.artbell.com. Uh, back now uh, to our guest, Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Doctor? Thank you very much. Um, an interesting night in more ways than one. Uh, let's go right back to the phones, and I'll kind of, I've got a million faxes, and I'll try to fit them in as I can. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Dr. Paglini. Good morning. Thank you, Art. Where, where are you? I'm in Tampa, Florida. Okay. My name is Tom. Hi, Tom. Uh, Evelyn, I have a, a strange story, and I'm a Christian. Uh, I'm 35 years old. Um, I guess this is a love story thing. The last two weeks have been really rough on me, and I've found the only thing I have to really go on is blind faith. Um, You're in love? Yeah. <laughs> I met her about three years ago in Ohio. Her family lives in Pennsylvania, and I brought her back down here to Tampa with me. And we have a six-month-old son. And uh, in the heat of a moment, Thursday night before the 4th of July, she ran to the phone, called her mom, said, oh, I'm ready to come home now. She was upset. It happens. 
Her mom had a plan set for this. She hated me from the beginning because I took her little baby away, more or less. When she was living in Pennsylvania, I met her in Ohio. They were separated already. It's been almost two weeks, and being the Christian, uh, and I like to think of myself as spiritually level as possible, I wouldn't look at this as a point of revenge at all, where I'm sure I've got some hard feelings toward her mom for this behavior. But that isn't what you want? Absolutely not. There's what, no reason what, why I would do anything to anybody. Okay, like let's, let's step to the quick, sir. Uh, what do you want? Well, would I be wrong following my own faith, or would it be ridiculous for me in the corner of my room, in a darkened little corner, to build a small shrine, or would that be of any help? I, I just want to hear an answer from somebody who would understand the theory behind it. All right, you want her back, right? Oh, God knows it. All right, uh, good. Um, that, that sets it up just fine. Uh, I understand what he's asking. Uh, Evelyn, he doesn't want to go after the mother-in-law. He harbors no real ill will, doesn't want to do her any harm, just wants his wife back. Mm -hmm. uh, what about his question? can be done, and there is nothing wrong uh, where he would be doing anything against this uh, Christian faith because there are many times that you will go to a church and you will light a candle and you will pray that God will answer your prayer. Right. What you are doing is you are building a temple in your home, and you are calling down that same God, and you are asking that same prayer. You're just using tools that are even more natural, that bring in a vibration, that assist and help you. If you want love back, that pink candle, especially in an image candle, representing her, is going to, with your desire, reach out and touch her emotionally. All right, let's ask specifically, a pink candle representing her, how do you get it to represent her? Okay, it is a wax figure in the shape of a female candle. Oh. And what you do is you can, if you cannot in your mind's eye know exactly what that person looks like and you need help, then you can get a photograph or an image, and you can use that either behind the image candle or on the image candle. And then you can take, if you have, something of that person, and you can also infuse that, which will be sympathetic, remember? Yes. And then you are going to consecrate it in that person's name. So it, it becomes, you infuse that image candle to represent the person. And then what you are doing is establishing a connection to that person. Mm -hmm. And so therefore what you are thinking and concentrating on and what you are doing is you are sending that thought pattern to that individual and they are going to start to receive it. Are you binding that person? There is a ritual called a binding action. You are not doing a binding unless that's what you are doing. All right, what I'm asking, I guess, is... Uh, you are establishing a contact for the time that you are doing Let this. us say it works. Oh, it works. Oh, I, I believe you. I, I'm saying, all right, for the sake of conversation, let us say it works. And uh, she comes back and the relationship is wonderful. Is what you have real? Yes, because you did not put, quote, unquote, a magic spell what you did is you came from your heart and your emotions and you sent that love, that longing, that desire, that feeling to the individual. You're not demanding, commanding, and, and so they're, they're, they're returning it naturally, but, you, but make no mistake about it, there, it, it is possible to bind someone. That's and the dark side, yes. Knowledge is a double-edged sword. And yes, you can do that, but then you have to live with it and you put your soul in jeopardy. That's the temptation when you have power and knowledge. All right. Again, I fall back on my crutch, the craft, and the movie, the craft. And toward the end, the one very powerful young lady uh, began to bind these others mm -hmm. so they could do no harm. Now, that is a binding, uh, yes. but one would presume under those circumstances, it would be one that would not produce a karmic return. That is correct. I understand. First time caller line, you're on the air with Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Hello. Hello, Art. Hi. 
Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Where are uh, you? This is Jason in Lafayette, Indiana. Yes, sir. And I was calling to ask about her knowledge on the Necronomicon, as uh, I have had experiences in the paranormal, such as uh, sensing ghosts and other such things. I'm not sure how to... Uh, I, I didn't hear the word Necronom... The Necronomicon is yes, a philosophy by Abdul El Hazred. Excellent book, Quote among there. others. Uh, I was wondering... I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. I was wondering about the danger in trying to cross the abyss, which is described in the book. Understand that every time you cross any abyss, you are going to first meet the demons of yourself, and they are ferocious. So but in order to working. cross the doorway to enlightenment, that's what you must best. Hmm. When you are when you are achieving this kind of level, you better have some discipline before you. Again. Don't right. open the door because you'll get more than you bargained for. Be prepared first before you implement an evocation or a summation or do anything to do with the Necronomicon or Crowley or anything like it. Mm -hmm. There are things that I don't do. Such have a background. I won't even undertake it because I've read in the book that it's being pure of heart and pure of body, actually. But I smoke cigarettes, so I won't even do it smoking cigarettes. <laughs> Which is, I don't know if that's too foolhardy or too fearful. Like I said, there is so much preparation that you would need to do and so much discipline. You are a chela, honey. You are a neophyte. You are not supposed to cross that threshold and open up that door without the preparation and the foundation. You do not have it. Sounds like good advice. Thanks, Art. All right. Take care. Uh, Wildcard Line, you're on the air with Dr. Evelyn Baglini. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing. Where are you? I'm in Las Vegas. All right. Um, I had a, an experience down in my um, my living room. I was watching a movie one day, and um, I have no explanation of what it is, and I was wondering if maybe I could get an opinion on it. Well, far away. Um, one night, me and my girlfriend, we were downstairs in the living room just watching a movie, and I noticed something in the right-hand corner of my eye, and so did she, and I looked over, and there was an orange and white multifaceted, like, I guess you could say energy ball floating like in the middle of the living room, and I knew it wasn't a reflection, it wasn't on the wall, it was like 3D, like in the middle of the room, just floating there. Mm -hmm. And I looked at her, and I was like, what is that? And she saw it, I knew I wasn't hallucinating. And ever since that day, I've been trying to find explanations, and I have no clue what it was, and I have, I don't know, I just feel some type of connection with this, and I've always been going down to those shops, and I've been trying to read on it and find information. I just, I was wondering if there was maybe a way you can tell me I could figure out what it is, or... Do you have an explanation for me, or I don't know? Sorry? Without, I would have to do a little bit more investigation, but right off the top, what I would think that the first thing you should do is to find out the history of that place, that domain, and find out if there has anybody that uh, was deceased, crossed over, because what it seems like to me is that you have got a spirit that is attempting to make contact with one or both of you. And right now they are showing themselves not in spirit form but in energy form. Now you also may notice that there will be certain areas of that particular dwelling that will have a difference in temperature. There will also be maybe later an aroma or a scent, okay, that will permeate the air even if it's only momentarily. I would need to uh, have you give me a call and give me more information and I can certainly give you uh some uh, background and tell you where to go and how to achieve the knowledge that you're seeking. This is not something people enter into lightly and plunge into at all. That's very dangerous, isn't it? Yes, it is. But sometimes you will enter a dwelling, and that dwelling has already a negativity built in or a spirit that is inhabiting it. And so, therefore, what you do, especially those who are sensitive, they will touch it and feel it immediately, but others, it, because they are not that sensitive, it will build up over months and sometimes even years, but eventually it seeps in, and you must deal with it. You must cleanse that environment. All right. West of the Rockies, you're on the air with Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Hello. Hi, Art. You've got a great show. Thank you. Where are I'm, you? I'm in Vancouver, British Columbia. All right. Um, Evelyn, um, I've got a couple things. First of all, white... I was told one time by a woman to white light myself before I go to bed, mm -hmm. wondering if that actually does anything. Um, 
most certainly can, especially if you believe in it. It's called a shield of protection, and everyone should do it. Okay. Oh. There, there is a wonderful presence if you can drop down to your levels into meditation, and you can open up your crown chakra, which is the top of the head, and you can bring down this energy force known as the white light and allow it to envelop you. What it does is it puts a shield of protection around you. That's right. That's what she said. And it will build. It will reinforce. But you have to believe it. So you've got to reinforce it every day until it becomes that suit of armor, until you know it's impenetrable. And when it is impenetrable, nothing but that which is of good and of love will be able to penetrate. That's right. Well, the other thing was, I believe I felt evil twice in my life. Like, really felt it. One time, this is going to sound strange, but we were at a psychic, and my girlfriend was talking to the guy, and all of a sudden, just this overwhelming feeling came over me, and I felt like I, we had to get out of there. And and later in the car, I was asking her what they were talking about, what she had to tape, and it ended up being that he was saying, you know, leave your boyfriend, da 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 he's not the right guy for you. Well... I don't know if that was evil so much as maybe just a feeling of, um, I, I don't know what you call it, but the other time that I actually felt something strange was in my apartment coming in and just something that overcame me. And what I, I guess it's more of a question than a, a statement that does it help if you, it's for me, I, I this, this is weird. I, I, I train in, in certain martial arts and I, all of a sudden I felt like, um, um, a warrior spirit. Mm -hmm. like I, I felt like okay, if you that's your chief force. Welcome to the club. Now you understand. Well, I, I just felt like I'll take you on right now, and it was right. my inner spirit ready to take whatever was on there. I'm very proud of you. See, it's your discipline, honey, in the martial arts that's opening up your chief force, your solar plexus, and that's your instinct. And your warrior would sense that kind of vibration immediately, and it would come to attention. Mm. Very proud of you. All right. Uh, we've got to hold it right there. Evelyn, hold tight. We'll be right back. Uh, we are discussing the craft. Um, Evelyn, uh, you're back on the air. Yes. Uh, here's somebody who writes, uh, and this is uh, a Wicca practitioner. I wish to thank you and your guests for discussing non-mainstream aspects of spirituality without resorting to the Hollywood stereotypes that so many other people in the media clung to. As a self-professed pagan who practices witchcraft, I can assure you that I do not live in a gingerbread house, nor do I worship the devil, and I'm never voluntarily engaged in projectile vomiting. When anybody calls or faxes your show and spews their hatred at you for discussing the craft, not only are they displaying their own lack of faith, but their lack of understanding of the United States Constitution and the religious rights of others that are protected by it. Besides, if theirs is the one true faith, why or what do they have to be afraid of? Would you agree with that? Very definitely. Uh, that's from uh, a young practitioner named Bryn Marie in San Francisco. There's an old saying that there is no religion that has a corner on God and that any religion that professes to be is an abomination before him. On the first time caller line, you're on there with Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Hello. Hi. Uh, you're going to have to speak up for us. Where are you calling from? Excuse me. I'm from Washington Hi. State. All right. And um, I have a couple of questions and, and um, something that's, well, okay. First question uh, that I have for uh, the doctor is how do you um, resolve this uh, accepting accepting from nature but using using your knowledge for uh, gain that's more than uh, natural in some ways I guess well again see if you got to the point where the gain was more than natural that was the temptation and that's where the balance must step in and you must stop or you must get into a humanitarian aspect where you're going to use that which you have gained in order to benefit others because you've already acquired all you need. Hmm. And um, also, um, you were speaking of, of the abyss. Um, this isn't something that I, I've accepted much of my whole life, but... When I was younger, and when, even when I was a child, I would see 
uh, you know, I could be playing in the yard and I would see an abyss open before me. Mm-hmm. And I, I would be scared away from entering it or I had to make the decision of, of uh, whether I would go into it or not. And not until I think I was in my late 20s did I feel that I was personally strong enough to, to enter a pond there. And there's a lot of information that you're instantly made aware of that's kind of um, not so much scary. It's not scary at the time. I mean, you feel um, it's it's overwhelming. It's very overwhelming. And that's and you power. feel as if you're power that's power. a lack <laughs> of what to do or, or if you can do anything. That's like taking and putting a loaded gun into a hand of a child. Yeah. You do not do that because yeah. the child, even though it has seen its power in action, will not be able to resist firing it itself. Yeah. Doctor, um, if you don't mind, uh, for the layman, uh, I'm one of those, what is the abyss? The abyss is an energy that is dark and that is evil, that has a lot of knowledge and information and beings and spirits, and it can be considered like a testing ground so that when you enter it, you can glean a lot of information and from that use it. And the further you go in, the more you are given and the more you are tested. But I said the biggest demons that you will ever fight in the abyss are the demons of yourself. Your own. That's right. The old monster from the id. That is correct. Doctor, um, it's going to seem like a shameless book plug uh, to some of my audience, but I don't care. I have observed over the last many years a process that appears to be underway in our society, uh, which I have chosen to call the quickening, uh, which suggests, and I'm sure you've heard me say it, that in every area of human endeavor, and I'm not even going to name them all, uh, you name it, it doesn't matter, things are quickening, things are changing. We'll just take the social side of things for a moment. Uh, it seems as though we have children, and while adult violence is on the wane, uh, the violence uh, with respect to young people is on the increase horrendously so, in fact, uh, children seemingly soulless, blank-eyed, doing each other in, dropping each other out of windows, bashing each other's skulls in, uh, even in my little community, horrid things occurring that you shake your head at, for lack of a better term, I call it the quickening, what's going on? We have entered into the countdown years, 1997 and 2004 is the first cycle, where there will be major growth and yet major devastation globally. And there is going to be a consciousness raising. There is going to be contact made with other beings from another planet in another universe. Many of us feel we're close to that. All of these are supposed to occur because this is part of that age of Aquarius, this age of enlightenment, to realize that we are not alone and that we are spiritual, and that there is a divine plan. First time caller line, you're on the air with Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Good morning. Yeah, hello. Is uh, my on uh, Lion Park? Yes, you are. Where are you, sir? Uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay, you're on the air. Hello, uh, Art and Evelyn. Yes. Um, my name is Chris. I'm calling from Minneapolis. Right. And... Um, I would like to ask you to Evelyn. I had an experience um, about six, seven years ago with uh, a girlfriend of mine where she and I both, in a movie theater, um, observed a dark figure who showed up, appeared out of nowhere. And, um, and then in, in, in the preceding uh, events, this figure disappeared in front of our eyes, and I've never had this experience again in my life. And and uh, we left, and we talked about it all night. And, and wouldn't, wouldn't care to have the experience again, I'm sure. No, 
And so you want to know what happened to you? I want to know what happened, and I've always been a very logical thinking person. Um, my cousins are, are um, scientists, once a professor at the University of Minnesota, and it, I, I can't reason it out very well. It's yeah. very difficult for the layman to experience and then to rationalize the yeah. fact that they have indeed touched or looked upon an energy form, be it spirit or entity, and not knowing the lay of the land and its history or its heritage, you may have indeed had some kind of slaughter or some kind of killing or something that may have occurred prior to what was there and built upon that land. And this particular spirit form remained there. Mm. And so therefore would definitely walk that land, no matter what structure was there. He would still walk it. And he would be seen by those who are sensitive, and you happen to be one, sir. Well, that's interesting, because I'm curious. There's a history in my family of sightings of UFO, UFO type of stuff and a combination of spiritual stuff. And I listen to art a lot, and there seems like there's some type of medium ground that might be going on. Could you comment on that? What do you mean by medium ground? Yeah, you know, what do you mean by that? Well, what I mean is... Um, What's your feeling, uh, Evelyn, um, regarding the crossover between spirituality and, and, and UFOism? I think they're one and the same. Please understand, no matter what is in creation, isn't it all part of all God's creation? And so, therefore, it is also spiritual. Oh, there are many, Evelyn, who would say absolutely not. And that does these... not mean that there are not negative beings. That does not mean that there is not those that we should be afraid of. Just as we have on this planet, do you not think throughout the universe that that has also manifested? You would be foolish not to think that. Mm. Uh, all right. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Good morning. Yes. Can I... Um... Ask, uh, well, you can't ask anything until you turn your radio off. That's number one, okay? Okay. All right. Now tell us where you're calling from. I'm calling from Pettis, Texas. Okay, far away. And um, I was just asking, I, I, y'all were talking in the first part of the show about uh, something about being Catholic or something. Well, what do you mean being Catholic? Uh, yeah. Evelyn's background is as... Uh, a Catholic uh, is what she said. What is it you want to know? Uh, well, does she proclaim herself as a Christian? Um, that's a straight-out question, Evelyn. Absolutely. That's just absolutely yes. Then he would say, I'm sure, then how can you talk of the practice of the things you do? Because it's all part of nature, and that's what God has given to us. And as long as you tap into that nature and you use it wisely and positively... There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. That's what you have to do. Rise above the knowledge of what you can do negative. It's there. It's a temptress. But don't give in. That doesn't mean that you're not supposed to use the tools that God gave you. It's only because you're afraid to use them. That's the test. Fear. Fear. West of the Rockies, you're on the air with Dr. Evelyn Baglini. Good morning. Hey, um, uh, uh, turn your radio off, please, sir. Yeah, turn it off. Okay. Yeah, whoever's back there, turn it okay. off. Uh, where are you calling from? From Phoenix. Phoenix. Oh, ground zero. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've got a, some, something to talk about with Evelyn. Um, I've, I've been involved in different things for a long time, and you mentioned the fact of uh, being a Christian and um, and I've always seen the, the the experiences and things of that nature to be like an expansion of, of Christianity like it takes it to another level um, I was kind of curious what she might have to say Is that how you would put it Evelyn? I would have to put it the same only because besides being raised Christian I was raised Genesean which is a pagan, natural, magic religion. And I belonged to an old society called the Guardians. And so I had exposure to both levels. And fortunately, not only my own family, but the priests and the professors that I came in contact 
have the wisdom and the spirituality to rise above pettiness. To rise above pettiness. First time caller line, you're on the air with Evelyn Paglini, doctor. Hi. Hi, my name is Ken. I'm calling from Southern California. Yes, Ken. Hi. Um, I wanted to pose this uh, hypothetical question. Um, we understand that that there is a force in magic. I myself have experienced it with druid rune magic. But wouldn't it be logical that since this is a power that the government or the secret government could be experimenting with it? Oh, that's actually a very, very good question. It, uh, he's right, Evelyn. If this is a real power, if this is uh, demonstrably real, <laughs> then uh, surely uh, there are lots of secret societies, um, some of them um, with government people uh, on high people, and surely they would have been dabbling in this sort of thing and not necessarily for the good. They have been dabbling throughout the world. I mean, at one time, Russia, in its dabbling, was about 20 to 25 years ahead of us until all of a sudden we caught up. Oh, really? And as far as England is concerned, they've never lost it. <laughs> okay? And many, many European countries have never lost it. We are now reestablishing it, meaning, again, coming out of the hiding. But... Uh, when a crisis arises, it is usually uh, the uniting of these people of that particular magical persuasion that assists whatever the endeavors are. There's no question about it. Magic is real. Yes, it is. It has always been here, and it always will be. Do you think it... Uh, I think I asked this earlier, but it's such a good question. Uh, will it begin to wane uh, as science begins to take over and we start cloning people and doing all the things they're talking about doing now? Will that be the new magic or will the old magic, uh, the spiritual magic, uh, come to the forefront? I feel that both, as always, will be in a little bit of a tug of war, but the more that science experiments and receives, the more spirituality will step in. There needs to be a balance always in the world. And when one gets out of balance, the other shall always rise to the occasion. Mm -hmm. That's part and parcel of the yin and the yang. Uh, doctor, I have one more hour of airtime air available, and you are welcome to it if you're still awake. Oh, I'm willing. still wide awake. Oh, you are, huh? I guess you are a night creature. Yes, I am, very much so. <laughs> All right, hang tight. Uh, we'll be back to you. Uh, in due course. Uh, doctor, um, I have a question for you. Yes. Uh, all my life, um, I wanted uh, a crystal ball. Mm -hmm. Not a glass ball, a crystal ball. Uh, and there's a funny little story that goes with this. And a very good friend of mine who knows a lot about radios and nothing at all about crystal balls, named Bob Crane, one of my sponsors and also a very good friend, went to the Orient. And I said, if you find a crystal ball, I'd sure love one. So he went over there. He was in Singapore, a very small town in Singapore. And he walked into this shop, and uh, Bob is not real good with currency conversion matters. Uh, he found a crystal ball, a real crystal ball, pure crystal, uh, utterly clear, and inquired of its price, and they uttered something or another in the, the currency of Singapore. And um, uh, Bob, Bob uh, said, I'll take it. And, well, um, the entire family of the person in the store uh, came out and began clapping him on the back, and they were having a feast and joyously celebrating the fact that he was going to take this crystal ball. Well, uh, Bob didn't have the heart not to buy it when he found out it was many, many hundreds of American dollars that he was about to pay out. Bottom line is... Uh, he couldn't disappoint them, all these shiny little happy faces <laughs> that were running out. And the bottom line is I ended up with a crystal, a real true crystal ball. Um, what is it about crystal? Uh, what properties uh, does crystal have that make it uh, unusual? It is like a conductor, and it is 
again, the vibratory rate. It is a window. It is a doorway. And so when you mentally focus and concentrate, it opens up that third eye, and it will actually produce scenes or images within that crystal ball to answer thoughts or questions that you have in your mind or that others would give to you. <laughs> so really and, and, and that is not an exorbitant amount of money. Uh, I have known of crystals, depending on the inch in diameter, that have gone over a $1,000. Oh, Pure yes. crystal balls. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, so he, that, that was not an exorbitant amount of money. He got a very good deal. Uh, well, he did. He was just really surprised. <laughs> it was actually... One of the funnier stories I've heard in a long time. Uh, first time caller line, your turn with Dr. Evelyn Baglini. Hello. Hi, um, my name is Sasha. I'm from Columbia, Missouri. I'm 21 years old, and uh, I'm an Aquarius also. Um, I have a couple questions, actually. Uh, my first one is um, I feel a lot of energy and anxiety. I also take antidepressants, and um, I feel like I'm a bit psychic somewhat. I was wondering... Um, if you could uh, help me in my youth uh, get a handle on this a little bit better. <laughs> All right, well, actually, let me translate. You can certainly answer this question, but there are, Doctor, many people, it seems to me, who are diagnosed with some sort of mental malady uh, because they have some sort of special insight or hear or see things that others do not. Not all of them are paranoid schizophrenics, are they? No, they are not, and like I said, more and more they are rising to the surface, these latent psychic abilities and these intuitions and these visions and precognition, uh, also in dreams. So uh, as far as him getting a handle on it, what he has to realize is that it is real and that it is happening and that he can learn to control it and to manifest it at will and then to utilize it. I had, in my, in my entire life, I've only had one incident of precognition, and it was clearly that, and I had no power over it. I, it had power over me. I couldn't ignore it. It came washing over me like gigantic waves crashing over someone until I could no longer ignore it. I've never been able to repeat it. I wouldn't begin to know how. I don't know why I had it. It just happened. Uh, is that the way it happens to the layperson? To most people, yes, until they start to open themselves up and actually train themselves to have it. A good form and way of allowing it to expand is to keep a journal. And when you start getting information or hits or intuitiveness, to write down the experiences and what you are seeing or feeling. And then as they come to fruition, what it does is it gives the mind permission to expand and give you more. I see. All right. Uh, wild card line, you're on the air with Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Hello. Hello there. Hello. Yes, hello. Turn your radio off, please. Yes. I have a question for her. All right. Uh, turn your radio off, please, or we cannot proceed. Okay. Um, what it is is that... Um... Goodbye. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Hello. Hi. I'm, I'm here as a turbo. Yes. Hi. Um, I haven't shared this with many people because... The only way I can share it is, is for people to say, we'll prove it. And my only way to prove it is by doing something terrible. Um, I was given a gift at a young age that I, I did not believe that I could possibly do until I did it. I, I had the ability, um, it's going to sound very hard to believe, but it's true. I can have people back it up. Uh, my, I don't know if you're going to call them third-hand victims. Um, I can tell them something is ha going to happen to them, and in malice, it would happen. I've had, you know, uh, one incident I can recall, which was in high school. I was being bothered by a bully, and I told him, I said, your rest of your week is going to be just as much hell as my, just, just my yesterday was. I said, your whole rest of your week is going to be more hell than anything was. I just said that as a dare, as a threat. He was walking home that day for no reason at all. He he was he was jumped. He was a, he was attacked. Um, he was picked on for the rest of the week. He was ridiculed by fellow students, uh, classmates. 
all these bad things started happening to him. He started bad luck, not just to him, but to his family. I got called into the principal's office, and I did not even know what was going on. I, and I found out about it. I said, uh, I did not set this guy up. I said, I just said it, said it as, as a threat. Nobody expected this out of me. I, I've done some other things where, uh, like just recently, for some reason, some aura told me to walk up to this pregnant woman. I walked up to her. I looked at her. And I said, I want you to raise your hands in the air. I guess I get this from my mother because she dealt with witchcraft. And I looked at her, and I said, now put your hands down. I said, you're going to have a girl. And I said, you're going to name her Cheyenne Marie. And she just looked at me, and she started wanting to scream. She had tears in her eyes. And she said, that is exactly, I never met this woman before in my life. She said, that is exactly the name that we picked up our child. Huh. And we just found out what the sex of the child was. There's some several other things that I've done out of malice, not to go into detail, but because I didn't know what I was doing as far as getting into seances and doing things like this and repeating what I've seen my other relatives do, it has come back to me in a terrible way. Yeah, well, there you are. Uh, that's exactly what we've been talking about all night. If you do it out of malice, uh, without justification, it comes back to you times ten. In what way did it come back to you? Well, I am so far in, in debt now that I never get myself out. I, I'm getting, I'm sick left and right. I never got. I usually I would be lucky if I mean not lucky. You know, I would only get a slight cold maybe once a year. Yep. Now I'm catching colds. I'm catching flus. Um, yep. I, you know, I can't control sometimes uh, bodily functions and and what have you. It, it comes back to me like like um, I remember one time. Um, I was on a, uh, I was on the football team in, in high school, and there's this guy who ran faster than me, and I had to wish something against him. Now, for some reason, I have, um, some sort of skin, skin inflammation, and the doc, the doctors can't explain it. I even thought for possibility some way, if there was Agent Orange, which I had contracted from my father, who served in Vietnam. Alright, hold, hold it there. I think we get the picture. Uh, doctor, let's say that, uh, there's somebody like this man who has something returning to him times ten. Is there anything to be done? Is there anything he can do to stop this karmic return? Well, first of all, what he needs to do is a cleansing. And then after doing that cleansing, he has to do an appeasement so that he can step out of that which he had perpetrated in guilt and restore it back in likeness or in kindness or in goodness. And he would have to make that vow to do so. And then just as they have appeared, they would begin to be dissolved and destroyed. But it is a, it is a process. But yes, it's he, he can to help. So what he probably ought to do is to find somebody like you. Yep. Contact me. Um, and since we've come to that point, how again do people contact you? Uh, please lay it out. By phone, they can call me at 818-783-2995. By email, it is qep at msn.com. And snail mail is Paglini, P-A-G-L-I-N-I, at P.O. Box 57932, Sherman Oaks, California, 91413. In your email address, Q-E-P. Yes. I understand the EP, Evelyn Paglini. What is the Q? Question. <laughs> That's very good. What's the Rockies? You're on the air with Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Hello. Hi, this is uh, Debbie from Orange County. Hello, Debbie. Hi, I called you about a week or so ago and then um, expressed my gratitude about what a satisfied woman I was to you. I recall. Yeah, okay, thank you. Also, Dr. Paglini, I spoke to you once on CRN uh, around New Year's Eve and tried to give a prediction. <laughs> yes, I remember. Okay. Um, anyway, my question is far from this. Um, I want to ask you if, if you deal with pets. 
With what? Cat. Cat. Oh. Yes. Yeah. In, in regard to what? With animals in regard okay, to Okay, I have, or possibly, I even hate to even say it, I had three cats. Two were 11 years old, one is nine. Uh, my 11-year-old male got out about a week ago and um, hasn't been heard or seen from since. We thought that we possibly saw him so terrible by the side of the road that he was so distorted and big and bloated. Perhaps it was denial. Um, I don't know. Are you asking whether she finds lost pets? Well, no. Um, I, I, I'm getting to my point. Okay. Uh, the point is I have a, a female, the nine-year-old female, has been literally... A cling on to me in the last week. I I cannot move without her following me. I can't sit down without her jumping on me. I can't lay down without her laying on me. Um, I I know that that uh, animals, pets in particular, have a a particular sixth sense. Um, I just want to know what this is all about. I just want an answer. Well. Well, first of all, the cat seems to be reacting to the loss of a loved one, and therefore it is naturally like any other child would be clinging to its mother or its authority figure. And so that's why it's not leaving you alone. It's very frightened. So the answer... It also senses the loss. So the, the answer may be simple. Comfort the animal. You know, I, I don't know what else to say. First time caller line, you're on the air with Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Hello. Hi. Um, where, are, where are you? I'm, for, I'm in Sacramento. Okay, you're going to have to speak up good and loud, get into that phone and yell at us a little bit. All right. I'm from Sacramento. Uh, my name's Susan. And is it Art, is this you? Yes. We sound a little different on the phone. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I want to ask you one question that I want to ask um, Dr. Paglini, another one. Go ahead. Um, I was wondering about the crop circles, and I was looking in a dictionary that I have, um, stating the symbols and, and things. We'll ask about that. Okay. Okay. And um, so I was kind of wondering about the symbols, you know, like the thunderstorm, the direction symbols, uh, annual symbols, you know, like the circle and then the dot in the middle, stuff like that. Okay, you have a question uh, for uh, Dr. Paglini? Yes, um, like that gentleman that saw a um, uh, round ball type of energy force. Um, I had an experience in my kitchen about 3 in the morning one day, and uh, uh, I was very much awake, but I felt this energy. I, could, I didn't see it, but I felt it, and I felt its size. And um, I was just standing there, and it was like about uh, three feet away from me. And then all of a sudden, it came into me, kind of like um, exploded, you know. But it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a bad feeling or anything. It was just, in fact, it was like a euphoric type of feeling, like um, you would experience when you were um, with your husband or your boyfriend, or you know what I'm saying. Um, and then all of a sudden, it left. Like a sexual experience. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then it shot out. Now, um, that was that was like that was a reality thing that happened. Um, about six months prior to that, I had a dream where I was um, in a dream, and all of a sudden, you know, I was on the beach and everything. All of a sudden, this lightning bolt type of energy force shot right through my whole body and like energized me. And I just didn't know what it was, and I was kind of I was kind of nervous because the day after this had happened physically in the in the real world, um, I was supposed to go to a spirit guide class. So I was kind of wondering, you know, like what that was. You know. All right. Uh, the first one was very interesting. Um, what could she have experienced? Well, if it was non-threatening. And she was saying that it was more euphoric and something more that when you were around someone that you love. She may have had a person that has crossed over that is a relative that loves her very much and wanted to comfort her and to guide her and to protect her and to make her aware that the quest or the door that she was about to open that she or he 
would also be with them. What uh, what part uh, of magic uh, does sex play? The sex is a very powerful thing in its own right, and it does have a connection, does it not? Oh, very much so. In fact, if you abstain from sex, you can use the sexual drive, the energy, oh. in magic. It is very, very powerful. In other words, that that unfulfilled need is a power in itself that can be directed? That is absolutely... Right on. <laughs> You're getting it. You're getting <laughs> yeah, it. You're I'm good. Be, uh, uh, wild Card Line, you're on the air with Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Hello. Hello. Uh, this is Dan in Virginia. Yes, sir. Dr. Paglini, uh, we have a big event that's being uh, referred to that's supposed to happen July 20th, and, you know, with the pyramids lining up, you know, on oh, yeah. Mars and so forth. And then a sacred ceremony that's supposed to take place, I think, in the pyramid itself. And I'm just wondering if you have any um, insight into that, or uh, what is your sense of what's going to happen here in the next week? Are there sacred uh, days and times? We have just begun to open the door to so many wonderful things that are going to be discovered. So many insights of ancient wisdom that are going to be displayed before us. Some will shock us. Some will, be, will shock us into reality. And yes, there is going to be many days that are in the months to come, including the 20th of this month, that are going to hurl us into the future. All right. Well, that will give them something to think about for a while. Uh, back now to my guest, Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Doctor? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so are a lot of people who would like to uh, talk to you. Um, first time caller line, you're on the air with Dr. Paglini. Hello. Hello, Art. This is Jean from Edmonds, Washington. Yes. I have a question for Dr. Paglini. About two years ago, uh, July 3rd to be exact, I woke up with a lot of stains on my hands, and it looked like I was holding tight to something, both hands, and I didn't tell anyone about it. Took three days to scrub them off. And then, exactly ten days later, I woke up with the same stains on my hands. This time, I took a Polaroid picture and went to a friend and showed her the stains. And she said, Jean, you have them on your feet also. And it looks like they're little drawings on your feet. I have tried to incorporate this in my life and moved to the present place where I live now. Last September, woke up again, brown stains on my feet. With, and I wanted to know if uh, you have any insight into this. Have you ever heard of such a thing, Doctor? Yes, I have. And uh, depending on the circumference and the design, she may indeed be being made contact by a being. I would have to have a lot more information to be able to give her a bona fide judgment. But, well, I will uh, call you and share my Yes, please do. And I do say. And, and give me some insight into the dimension and the uh, arrangement, how many of them are there, and what is the, what does it look like, or give me the pictures of what it looks like, and I'll be able to tell you. I certainly will do that, and I thank you very much. You're welcome. Dear. All right, thank you. Um, Wild Card Line, you're on the air with Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Hello. Hello? Hello. Hello. Um, my, it's not really a question, it's kind of a situation. Um, what it is is that, I was living with somebody who committed suicide, and um, this person that, well, we were very much in love, and I had decided to, things had gotten kind of progressive and obsessive. Yes. I decided to kind of back it off a little bit. Yes. I had told him that we needed, the night that it happened, I told him that we needed to live apart for a while. Yes. Um, he went home. He called me where I was. Asking when I'd be home, I told him to in a little while. I came home 45 minutes later, and I found him hanging from our staircase. Oh my God! Uh, um, uh, I know I don't know what you're gonna think about. I I don't know really anybody that tells you about these things, but um, ever since then, like it's it's an overpowering and overwhelming feeling that the man is. Here, he's always here. He's always around, and it just it won't leave. 
I can't be alone in one place. I can't sleep alone in the place. I can't do anything alone in one place because I have a and I know it is there. And it's all right, ma'am, uh, listen, please. Yeah, uh, the, the spirit must be exercised only because what it's doing is it's trying to get her to join him. And I'm sure she's already felt that. Has she not? I don't know. Ma'am, have you? About what? Have, uh, didn't you hear what she just said? No, I didn't hear what she said. Uh, she said, this. You, you need an exorcism. This person is trying to get you to join them. Have you felt that? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's your answer, then. No, that's not my answer. Yes, yes, that is your answer, ma'am. You need an exorcism. Do you know what an exorcism is? Yes, I do. Uh-huh. Can you tell me, I mean, we, I mean, we love each other. I mean, why, why is he, I mean, is he there for a good, a good purpose, or is it bad? All right. I, again, depending on what you're feeling when that presence is around you, if it is a feeling of being very drained and very tired, then what he is doing is he is pulling your energy. And if you are being uplifted, revitalized, and rejuvenated, then he would be there to help you and assist you and to guide you. But the way you were talking and the energy that you were giving me, it was sounded like he was asking you to join him. Well, she said that. Um, she said that. Uh, so, uh, obviously, um, she needs somebody who would tend to this sort of thing. Um, so the subject of suicide, uh, what would you say about that? Unfortunately, karmically, he will have to come back and he will finish out the prescribed amount of time that he was supposed to be on this planet. So he will reincarnate quickly. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Hello. Yeah, good morning, Mark. Morning. And thanks, first of all, thanks for your show. I love it. And thanks so much for playing that particular bumper tune. It's my favorite. Uh, doctor, I got a question for you. I don't want to seem uh, smart aleck or impertinent, but I've heard so many, what I would term a witch, so many witches say that they are also Christians. Ma'am, I don't understand how you all can do that because, and why you would want to pay lip service and, and give that good advertising to that religion because its Old Testament, first of all, says, and I quote, suffer kind of witch to live, and I realize that Christians are injuncted from actually doing that unless they're sinless now. But still in all, that says that what you do is, is terribly evil, and I wouldn't associate it myself with anything that said I was terribly evil. Or what are your thoughts on that? Again, because I have realized that there are many religions out there, each religion is trying to achieve the same thing as I am, and right. that is the communion with the God force or the goddess, whichever you want to call it. And can I interrupt at this point and say that, having said that all roads lead to Rome, so to speak, why not take another one that doesn't say you're evil and... and Give them the good, uh, Do you the realize point? that there are so many religions out there that are misunderstood? And so because of it, those people are supposed to forsake their belief and their culture and their form of praying to their God only because it does not agree with another? There well, have been many religions that came long further than the many it. religions that have come long before Christianity. Christianity is a babe in the woods. It's only a couple of thousand years old. That's true, but it basically... basically you're going to find evil. that there has been religion. Now, we're not talking evil. So you're equating well, witchcraft with evil. evil. I don't think you're evil. I'm an atheist, and I don't think you're evil. No, I'm saying most people out there will equate witchcraft with, with evil, evil, and that's a shame. And that's because, because I've met of many Christian people who are religion. Not. Pardon me? That's because of the Christian religion that they've done that. There are other religions that have done that, too, and that's okay because we are becoming more enlightened. And becoming more enlightened and more spiritual will become more tolerant of each other's religions. I told you, honey, we are the human race. Right. And the, the religion you know, all, is all God. religions are your culture. Really, as a human being. And, uh, well, I didn't want to start an argument. I just wanted to ask you how you could uh, square that. And uh, basically, like I said, I'm an atheist, but if I had to pick a religion, I would probably pick crap religion. It's the most charming of them all. There Thanks. is 
so many wonderful things that belong to each religion. When you really get into the heart and the soul of a philosophy of a religion, they all sing the same tune. Yeah. Just raise your vibration. They all sing the same tune, and it's the music of the spheres. Well, to the Rockies, you're on the air with Dr. Evelyn Paglini. Hello. Hi, Art. Yes. Hi. Um, first of all, I could say I really enjoy your show. Thank you. Where are you? I'm in Seattle, Washington, okay. and I'm actually calling on a VTEC 900 NDS. <laughs> all right. Um, doctor, um, uh, I have been told through most of my adult life that I give off a certain energy and that people can actually sense it. Mm -hmm. um, what would that be construed as, and how can I figure out why I have it? First of all, what is construed as is a vibration. There are many times you'll walk into a room, and you will sense certain people and actually be repelled by their energy. You will want to get away. There are others who will magnetize you. And what you are doing is you are sending off or sending out that vibration or that energy, which is either going to attract or repel. I see. And what you need to do is to learn how to control it. In other words, if you are overpowering people with your vibration, then you need to bring it on down, close it down. Think of a thermometer. And, take, and bring the energy level down so this way you are not offensive. They are not picking up that vibration. Unless you want them to, then raise the thermometer, honey. <laughs> Everybody in your room will know you're there. Yes, I do understand that. All right. I have, uh, I've, I've been in that situation, uh, a doctor, where I walk into a room and there is somebody there, and before they even open their mouth, I know that I, I want to be clear and out and away from them and nothing to do with them. That is correct. That's vibration. Uh, uh, vibration, huh? That is right. You are sending off. See, the body, the aura, sends off a vibration. It is emitted. And those that are sensitive immediately will pick up. Those that have a real strong vibration can be repelled by it, can find it offensive. Others will use it as a magnet. All right. First time caller line, you're on the air with Dr. Paglini. Good morning. Good morning to you, or good morning, doctor. Where are you? I'm in San Marcos, okay. San Diego. Um, my question is this. A couple of months ago, I was sleeping with one of my cats, and we both woke up at the same time, knowing to turn towards the window because something was staring at us. And when I turned, I wasn't afraid, but it was um, kind of like in a black and white outfit, the whole body with big eyes and kind of crouching down looking at us and yet I didn't feel afraid but yet the only thing I wanted to look for was did this thing have horns you know was it the devil which I don't believe in well first of all it was your inner sense that was actually communicating with it and trying to see is it something of evil or negativity or is it something that is benevolent or is it something that is just trying to make contact Exactly. That's exactly how I felt. Yeah, you were very right in doing so. Very good. Do you have any idea what it could have been? If you did not see horns, mm -hmm. then what you had was, especially if it was humanoid, then you had a discarnate entity that was trying to make contact with you. You and know, that was... not humanoid, then we'll go into something else. That's, that's the question right there, because the whole body, I'll say that maybe it was maybe about five feet tall, mm -hmm. um, strong build, and the what it was, the colors were black and white, and they were all in hearts, but in a perfect pattern. Mm -hmm. And yet these wonderful big eyes, and it was so curiously staring at me. Again, my feeling would be one that it is not negative, it is positive. I feel that it would be also something that might also be able to teach you. And so, therefore, definitely it is attempting to make contact. Get yourself a journal, start te teaching yourself to take down notes. You will see that there will be, um, oh, I would say things that may be planted in your mind 
and therefore jot them down. They are not thoughts of your own. They are being definitely put in there. Keep a journal and give me a call. Huh. Interesting. In other words, uh, many, many people may be controlled and certainly wouldn't be aware of it unless they begin to document it. Absolutely. Fascinating. Uh, Wildcard Line, you're on the air with Dr. Paglini. Hello. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Tammy from Bakersfield. Yes, Tammy. Yes. And um, the one thing I, I, I've been very, very puzzled over is I have been um, for for many years thinking very seriously about doing past life regression. Um, basically, um, due to my family, they sometimes tell me that once in a while. When I am talking in my sleep, yes, that I'm speaking in an entirely different language. Oh, right. Uh, speaking in tongues. Tongues, yeah. Yeah. Very definitely, uh, you could get a hypnotist, hypnotist that is into regression therapy. He would first take you back into your childhood to find out if you had been exposed to that language. And then he would regress you into another incarnation to find out just exactly where it came from. There may also be some kind of maladies that you are experiencing or fears or phobias that you are experiencing in this lifetime that can be attributed to a past incarnation. I do therapeutic hypnosis, so I know of which I speak. All right. You've taken people into past lives. Yes, I have. Is there any question about it? Is there any doubt about it? No, I've had it verified. We've done documentation. This has always intrigued me. I have talked to many who have done the same thing, and they do claim that they can gather evidence under hypnosis. Yes. Specific evidence, and then go and confirm and check it out. that. And check, check it out, it. and it checks out. It does. That would seem to confirm the whole uh, reincarnation business. Uh, doctor, we're coming to the end of the uh, the time. It's just flown by, um, so I would like to give you an opportunity to give out whatever contact information. Now, we've got a web page link to your web page on our site now. Okay, my number is 818-783-2995. My email is qet at msn.com, and to write me, it's Paglini, P-A-G-L-I-N-I, at P-O Box 57932, Sherman Oaks, two words, California, 91413. And may I state one more thing? You may. If anybody out there wants to get the edge on their future, Buy the book, The Quickening, not just for yourself, but for a loved one, because it should be in every person's home. And I do mean if you want to get the edge on your future and know what's happening, get the book, The Quickening. Oh, that's very kind, Doctor. Thank you. Um, and uh, and thank you for spending so much time with us. Uh, My pleasure. We, we will again one day do it. Uh, thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. Good night. Good night. All right, to get a copy of this program. And uh, there have been many, many, many things documented in this program that many of you may find of use. Uh, to avoid having to repeat it, please take this number down. It's 1-800-917-4278. That's 1-800-917-4278. Four two seven eight. It's a good 24-hour number. If you find it busy now, keep trying, or later in the day, or tomorrow, or whatever. 1-800-917-4278. From the high desert, I'm Art Bell. Good night. Um.